and to us about what all's going on, and then uh, we'll let you all just take it over with the parliamentary procedure. Now these these guys have won the region. It used to be the North Kentucky region. Now it's so capital, city. capital city region, and uh, they're going to represent the capital city region in the state competition. I guess here in a couple months. So I invited them to come practice. Hey Martin, see Martin, good to see Martin. And uh, Sandy Clevenger, my uh, school board colleague from many years ago, and Peter, her husband, glad to have y'all tonight. So okay, your floor is y'all's. Please, I'll stand over here so I can talk to everyone. Well, hello, and um, thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. We are the Spencer County FFA Senior Parliament Parliamentary Procedure Team. Basically, with like Scott said, we have we were blessed to win the region and be able to compete at state this June. The purpose of the parliamentary procedure contest is we are given a topic to debate on and giving a list of motions that we are required to do within our meeting. The purpose of parliamentary procedure is to be able to run through a meeting smoothly and in order. So we're going to get ready to give you a little presentation. Yes, absolutely. Is there any new business? Madam President. Madison. I move that our chapter landscape the front entrance to our high school. Second. It has been moved and seconded that our chapter landscape the front entrance of our high school. Madam Maker of the motion, would you like to exercise your right to first debate? Yes, Madam President. I urge the members here today to stay with me for this motion for following reasons. Doing this landscape to our school's front entrance will give our school the aesthetically pleasing front view it needs to welcome our students, guests, and parents. Also, this is an amazing opportunity for our agriculture members to test their floral skills. And within giving this opportunity to our Spencer County who participate in ag classes will lower the cost of labor, making this motion very doable financially. Closing with those details and reasoning, stay with me and pass the motion. Madam President, Maddie, I advise all of you to rise with me for this motion for the following reasons. Spencer County High School is a distinguished school based on state testing. Our schools should look clean, organized, and professional to the new members of our community coming from other counties. To show how welcoming our students, staff, and our school really is. Secondly, there is also an environmental benefit to adding landscape to our school. The root system helps to protect the dirt of our foundation around the high school, allowing a healthy root system leads to a healthy environment. Therefore, I encourage you all to stand with me for this motion. Madam President, Dalton. I stand firmly against this motion. There have been other businesses inside the community that have expressed their interest in wanting to do this job for our school. Additionally, we simply do not have enough time to conduct this event as the school year is coming to an end at a rapid rate. With the school year coming to an end, there is state testing and other finals and tests that students must take before the school year is over. I urge this committee to strike down on this motion. Madam President, Grayson. I call for a recess of five minutes. Second. It has been moved and seconded to recess for five minutes. The motion to recess is not debatable but can be amended. Are there any amendments? All those in favor of recessing for five minutes say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. The no's have it and the motion is lost. The meeting does not stand recess. Is there any further debate on the main motion? Madam President. Grayson. I'm against this motion for the following reasons. Right now the weather is not right right now. Some days it's really warm and some days it's really cold. So I don't think a large project like this would be adequate at this time. Also our chapter is very busy with banquet and the end of the year coming up close and us having to sign our new office regime. For these reasons, please stand with me and vote against this motion. Is there any further debate on the main motion? Madam President Addison. I move to amend the motion by adding the words over the summer. Second. It has been moved and seconded to amend the motion by adding the words over the summer. So that the amendment is adopted, the main motion as amended will read that our chapter landscape, the front entrance of our high school over the summer. Madam Maker of the motion, would you like to exercise your right to first debate? Yes, Madam President. 
As the maker of this amendment, I encourage you all to vote in favor of it. First, there is no school in the summer, so members are not busy with schoolwork and will have more time to participate in this activity. This will provide more flexibility in schedules and allow us to get more volunteers together at one time. Secondly, it is warm in the summer, so plants will grow well without the risk of frost that comes with spring planting. For these reasons, vote for this motion. Madam, Madam President, President, I rise to question of privilege. State your request. It is rather hot in here. May we remove our FFA jackets? The FFA jacket is an important part of our official dress. Therefore, your request is denied. Thank you. Is there any further debate on the amendment? Madam President. Madison. I stand with this amendment for the following reasons. Summer planting is genius. This will allow our FFA members to gather and enjoy each other's company while the summer is over. Also, while planting these plants for our Spencer County High School, there is no surely that they are going to die during the summer. Also, during this season, plants are more available, making them cheaper to buy in bulk. For the following reasons, I urge for you to stand with me in this amendment. Madam President, Maddie, I rise in favor for this amendment for the following reasons. During summertime, it's the most proficient time to get our FFA chapter together and landscape the front of our high school because the weather is beautiful and the soil will be dry enough to plant pretty flowers in front of the high school. Also, the summer is the perfect time to pick flowers from our very own greenhouse that our FFA members take care of through the summer. Therefore, stay with me for this amendment. Madam President, Grayson. I'm against this amendment for the following reasons. Right now, some plants, it's their planting time, and summer can be really hot and dry, so I think planting in the spring would be way much better due to most plants needing to plant earlier in the season. Also, we do not have the time, due to FFA members going to prepare for CDE teams for state fair, and members doing livestock shows all across the state. And for these reasons, please stand and vote against this amendment. Madam President, Dawson. I stand firmly against this amendment. Having this event in the summertime is not our best option. As a previous member stated, we have other members that are doing other things. We simply do not have enough manpower in order to have this event, as other people may be doing events for FFA or personal vacations. Additionally, we would be better off doing this at a later time, and we need to be able to get special permission from administration before we can have this event. We would be better off doing this in the fall or spring of next year. For these reasons, I urge this committee to strike down this amendment. Is there any further debate on the amendment? The question is on the adoption of the motion to amend the motion by adding the words over the summer. So if the amendment is adopted, the main motion as amended will read, that our chapter will landscape the front entrance of our high school over the summer. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. No. The ayes have it, and the motion passes. Division. A division has been called for. We will now proceed to vote by rising. All those in favor of amending this motion, please rise. Three, four, be seated. All those opposed, please rise. Two opposed, be seated. There are more than two-thirds in the affirmative, and the amendment is adopted. Is there any further debate on the main motion now amended that our chapter landscape the front entrance of our high school over the summer? Madam President Addison, I rise in favor of this motion. Our school has very little landscaping around the entrance, and this would be a nice addition to the school's appearance. Secondly, it will be a great way for members to get community service hours required for participation in certain clubs, such as VEDA. This counting as community service hours would also encourage more participation in this event. For these reasons, vote for this motion. Is there any further debate? The question is on the adoption of the main motion now amended that our chapter landscape the front entrance of our high school over the summer. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. No. The ayes have it, and the motion passes. <coughs> our chapter will landscape the front entrance of our high school over the summer. Excellent job, Wes. Hey, Judge. Yes. I look around this room, and I see a lot of people that were in the FFA, just like we were, and they participated in this. So we have the people that, uh, past members of the Spencer County FFA stand up, or Taylorsville FFA, if I die. 
What about Russell County? Russell County? Hey, oh, that's a fair there. Is the closing ceremony, I guess, the open and closing is the same as it always was? Yes. Yeah. yeah. As we mingle with others, let us be just and diligent in labor, just in our dealings, courteous to everyone, and above all, honest and fair in the game of life. Uh, item C is approval of the minutes. Uh, and, um, 
I appreciate getting the minutes of Tuesday. That worked out quite well. It was a holiday Friday. And uh, anyway, I looked through them, and there's, there's uh, three changes that I noticed. On page one, you see where it says $7 million. <coughs> that should be 700000 So we have that change. You see it about mid I'll third of the way down. And then uh, on page 17, where we talk about buying the skid loader, it's uh, 56299 It should be 56295 Just a small change there. And then the, on page 30, where the, all that information on page 30 uh, should not be in here because it has personal information on it. Uh, so I feel we needed to read that the entire uh, the page number is Michael oh. here at the bottom. Uh, I'll put it at the ones at the top. Yeah. But they're close, but anyway, the, the old cigarette three old. Yeah. Uh, all, all of that needs to be uh, uh, struck, especially because it has the uh, personal information at the bottom. So those are only changes that I saw. People want to leave the motion where the motion was made at the top? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, we need to leave that language at the Just top. Leave the rest of Yes. I think they're the way out. Out. <clears throat> are we still going to include all the invoices and, like, resolutions, things that we had copies of in our fiscal court packet and yet they're included in the minutes here? I don't really know if they're needed. Yeah, well, it's uh, like the bills and stuff. Yeah, I, I thought they were, I think, a little more of what we were looking for, myself. Uh, but I will say that these are a lot, a lot better than what yeah. we got in the yeah, In fact, the other day, Michael, you couldn't see it on the phone, but when we were talking, I told you they were pretty thin. Right. Anyway, I couldn't tell you on the phone, but, but anyhow, they, uh, I, I I thought they were great. Uh, well, they were straight to the point. It. That's why I like So, but anyway, uh, if no one has anything else to add, no other changes, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes with the three changes that were mentioned. I'll make a motion uh, to approve the minutes with all the additions and corrections stated by the judge. And okay. Was good. So I'll second it. Yeah. I'll second it. So we have a motion by Mike, seconded by myself, uh, to approve the minutes uh, with the three uh, changes and corrections that were mentioned. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Minutes are approved. I'm sorry, I thought you said you'd entertain a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. We got it done. Uh, Next, the uh, communication to the judge executive. I got just a few items to go over. Uh, you know, we, we voted the last meeting about doing the, uh, the QR, QR codes and things in our vehicles, and uh, we are rolling that out. Uh, I know there was discussion on having it on Mondays, and but I checked the minutes and we put weekly, and uh, like it was. Scott Herndon and I had a discussion, and he said that, uh, like, if a guy doesn't start work that week until Thursday, uh, you know, it would make sense to do it Thursday. And I did look back, and it said weekly. It doesn't say Monday. We didn't say Monday. We just one done weekly. Yeah, every week. Yeah. So we're, we're in the process. I know a lot of attention <coughs> was put on the idea of making sure that it got done, and we're, we're working. You know, it wasn't something we could do like that. When do so, you, you think it would be implemented? Me and Bernie uh, yeah, discussed it a little bit. We're thinking probably two weeks. Yeah, two weeks? A couple weeks. Yeah, and, and, and let, let's say by, by the first of May, we get it in the mail. Let's say by the first of May, uh, you guys can come in and you can see any vehicle the previous week. Just let that be a goal. Now, will we be turning that into Brittany? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The way, that, the way that'll work. You just don't scan it on their phones and the mm -hmm. QR code is going direct to our unit. I turn it up and it'll go straight to Yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Mitten is working on that and getting the, the QR codes in the vehicle and all that. Yeah. I hope to be ready by the first of May. Yeah. 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 It, it seems like I know a few people that brought their phones in and Brittany worked on. And, uh, but anyway, uh, that we're, we're on our way to getting, getting that accomplished. Uh, 
I passed around a QK4 contract. I hope that you guys had it. Yep. Uh, that's where uh, they're starting that road on Old Head Bridge. Uh, and I mean, our, uh, the QK4 has been our engineer. And uh, I guess when the last court started this project, uh, of course, I heard Dean and the, or Dean and the QK4 was in on it, and I had to. Uh, I went ahead and signed that. So I just wanted to show you guys that, that we signed that to start working there on phase one. So just so you all be aware, uh, everything happening. That's all I got. Does anyone else have anything in particular before we move on to communications? All right. Uh, now I'll call. Uh, well, I forgot. I forgot the building safety. Proclamation. I read. I read that last time. Uh, you get ready for prank or a plan or something, ain't you? Yeah. And anyway, I have this proclamation that I signed, and I won't read it, but it's about building the safety month. It's the month of May, and ba basically, uh, it, it is what it says that we need to be uh, safe and we need to uh, in, in a building, and uh, the building codes uh, exist for a reason. And uh, you know they used to make uh, houses with wooden chimneys, and they figured that was not the best. And, and they changed. <laughs> I, I read all that today. So, but anyway, <coughs> so anyway, I signed that proclamation. So we'll put that put that in. All right. Next we have uh, Julie. You're up. And I don't know if you guys read the uh, minutes of the planning and zoning meeting. Uh, I, would, I would encourage you to, to read them so you can understand the discussions that go on uh, from time to time. And I'm guessing that some of your meetings are longer than ours. They can be. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, that's that's all of us. That's America. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read. I have two first readings that we don't take action on. I'm going to do those first. So I have the application of Joshua and Lindsay Moore requesting R1 residential at I-1 Agricultural on lots one consisting of 1.171 acres, lot two, 1.188 acres, located in Shawnee Springs, located on Little Mount Road, Highway 44. Commissioner Hunt, I make a motion to recommend to rezone the application of Joshua and Lindsay Moore requesting zone change from R1 residential to I-1 Agricultural on lot one consisting of 1.171 acres and lot two consisting of 1.188 acres of Shawnee Springs located on Little Mount Road, Highway 44. The recommended land use map for comprehensive plan recommends medium density residential. The change would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan and there's no one there to speak against it. Commissioner Knowles second that motion after a roll call vote, motion carried. And that one will be in Wheeling's district. Second, I have the application of Paul and Cheryl Whitehead requesting R1 residential to Ag1 Agricultural on 29.66 acres located at 319 Wills Way. Commissioner Wheatley made a motion to recommend to rezone the application of Paul and Cheryl Whitehead requesting zone change from R1 residential to Ag1 Agricultural on 29.66 acre tract of land located at 319 Wills Way. The recommended land use map in the comprehensive plan recommends low density residential. The change will be in compliance with the comprehensive plan, and we've heard testimony from concerned citizens that think it is clear that they can rezone it. <coughs> Commissioner Mudd second that motion after a roll call vote. Motion carried. And that one will be in John Travis's district. So those are first readings. This one here is a second reading. It's the application of Derek and Rebecca Thompson requesting Ag 1 Agricultural to Ag 2 Agricultural on two separate tracts of land. Tract A consisting of 6.07 acres. Tract B consisting of 6.09 acres located in the 4,000 block of Plum Creek Road, which is Highway 1060. Commissioner Mudd made the motion to recommend the rezoning of Derek and Rebecca Thompson requesting zone change from Ag 1 Agricultural to Ag 2 Agricultural on two separate tracts of land. Tract A consisting of 6.07 acres. Track B consisting of 6.09 acres, located in the 4,000 block Plum Creek Road, Highway 1060. The recommended land use map and the comprehensive plan recommends low density residential. The change would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan, and there was no one there to speak against it. Commissioner will second that motion, and after a roll call vote, motion carried. And this is in uh, Magistrate Stubbs' district. Okay, you heard the uh, 
we need to make a motion on this one it's, since it's the second reading. I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve. Uh, uh, just one at a time. Just, just the, the one of the uh, Thompson. So that's fine, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to accept it. Based on finance, Based on finance it, it doesn't matter. It's explored. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's down there at the bottom. I can go and read it. Based on the recommendation and findings presented by the Planning and Zoning Commission, or state specified finding that you pick on, or the Planning and Zoning Committee hearing that everybody uh, either approved or not approved. Okay. It doesn't matter. First. Second. All right. We have a motion by Mike and seconded by Dan uh, to approve the uh, Planning Commission's uh, recommendation on uh, this uh, property owned by the Thompsons. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. All right, then you have another one. I do. I have proposed uh, ordinance number eight for fiscal year 2022-2023 series. It's an ordinance amending Article 5 of the Total Spencer County Zoning Regulations, establishing Section 500.1, which is the R1T single family townhouse district. To provide regulations to govern the location and placement of townhouse developments. Um, Commissioner Brown made a motion to forward this fiscal, to fiscal court into the city with the changes for the townhouse regulation R1T single family townhouse district. Commissioner Fowle second that motion after roll call vote motion carried. So this one is it is second reading. Um, I've had some questions about it and maybe just to, to put this out here um, I had somebody ask if we broke this up by an acre, how many homes would we be looking at per acre? And so we tried to calculate that up for you um, because it says each unit is required 2,000 square feet. Then the, each unit is required 500 uh, square feet of open space. And so doing the math on that without taking out for roads or anything like that, the absolute maximum would be about 17 houses per acre but you're not going to get that because you have to have space for your roadways and your utility easements and, and all that so um, at the end of the day i talked to uh, jacob brown who is uh, on our zoning uh, board that helped draft these you know we figure 12 to 13 units per acre is probably going to be about all you're going to see by the time they're required their open space roadways and Will you, also, go ahead. will you have a size limit on the total number that each development uh, see some, somebody comes in and they want a preliminary plan for 500 of these homes i mean is is that possible or could we limit it the number for each development i mean the way, the way it stands i mean it, it's possible if they have the right amount of acreage if you know the utilities are available I mean, there's, there wouldn't be anything that we could keep on doing it. I mean, just like any kind of a subdivision development after all, as long as they can provide everything necessary. But could, know, could we put something in there, there to keep them from building, say, just enormous on and all, you know, without any regulation? Open end to it. You know, I, mean, <coughs> I mean, this is new, so if we change it, right. where it's at, it's going to be what we say it is. So. Um, I mean, I'll defer to Corey on that as far as that part of it goes because my thing on here is we could, I guess you could set a limit, but what would keep them from developing 10 acres here and coming next door and then say, I'm doing the next 10 acres? How do you tell people that they well, have to do that? At least you know? it would be a stopping point and then they'd have to start over and do a whole new one and go through the process again. Some people may not want to go through the process over and over and over again. They'll say, I'll do We'll do something else. Yeah. See. I just hate to see just a whole farm full of these, you know, yeah. with no, you know, with just. But I think as long as the infrastructure is there and they do everything they're required as far as, you know, what we're telling them that they're providing their their open space, they're providing you know all their adequate parking and they're. I don't know if there's a way we could set that. 
and our EMS and our fire departments and our police departments that residential taxes alone will not make up the difference mm -hmm. over time. And Judge, you said it yourself in the last meeting, you know, when we all get old, places like this might be a place for, you know, where you got less yard to mow. And I don't mean this in any kind of certain way, but generally the older population is the one that's most taxing on our emergency services, especially EMS. And um, some of these things were just now kind of getting our head above water. And we start putting, you know, a home with four people in it on one acre, you go from doing that, you got 15 homes, you average two people per home per acre, that's 30 people per acre. And it's just exponentially increasing our population density without bringing in any higher tax base to help supplement the things that we're going to need as far as roads and EMS and sheriff's office with more people. And you said in a meeting earlier too, that earlier in the year too, that when people get close together, Sometimes they don't get along. Yeah, that was Jim. Said that. Jim, Jim said this. <laughs> and so there comes the police side of things like that. And I, just, I, don't, I don't support this <laughs> at all. I don't care if you say they're going to put three on the nation. I don't support it at all because we're, I'm all about creating cre cre population and giving people a nice place to live in a rural community <laughs> with countryside to look at. I'm not about creating cities. And metropolises and houses on top of houses on top of houses and 15 houses with 30 people per acre. When the residential tax base does not keep up with the infrastructure requirements that are going to be needed later down the road. We're, do you think we can? Do you think what he's saying is legal as far as uh, state statute that we cannot? My, my only thing to think about on this is right now we already have regulations that would allow apartment complex so today they could build an apartment complex that would look just like that and they would be real units this is offering homes that people could buy you know in each one of those instead of being a rental unit they're going to pay i think probably more for it as a home where they're more likely to take care of it and maintain it than they would if they were in an apartment and let the landlord worry about that. You know, I think we would probably make it better on our tax base if they were sold individual units than if it became apartment complex. So let me be clear. I don't like apartments either. I get it. And, just, and, and, and that <laughs> argument, and my argument, your argument is, is just because we got a couple fast food restaurants in town, it doesn't mean I want more. I want a nice place to eat. I understand. Um, I just I don't want to create more population density. We already have apartments for that. We already have some other ways around that. I I just think this is a frivolous way to to go along with whatever builders uh, later on down the road. And I don't think we're ready to take that. Up. And I'm not in favor of. Taking, putting whatever builders and developers want to do over top of what's going to be best for this county 15, 20 years down the road. Well, go ahead, Zach. The, I don't want it either. I'm not going to say that I want to have an old one like that. I don't, I don't, nobody wants that. But what this is, this isn't, we're not putting this in place for, for, for a developer to actually build something. We're putting this in place so we can control what a developer does, what a builder does, correct? Well, that's what she's explaining to you is that right now they can build this with what we have already got passed and in place and call it an apartment and we have that. That's what we'll have. And then we have no way to regulate this. This way, with what we're passing here, what they're trying to pass is a way to regulate to where they have to do what we want to do on this. That's where this is at. What's the I don't know we can What's the say. Is it R1, R2, B1, B2? It's R3. It's and you can do it in commercial as well. So why are we not just amending R3 for our commercial regulations while we create the new? Because we felt like this would be a better avenue than, than what you're saying. I mean, because that R3 is still out there as multifamily for patio homes, like what's at the side of the uh, elementary school. Um, it's still there for apartment buildings, you know, things of that nature, yes. 
Well, we can just can't amend that to include this. I mean, I guess we could. Well, we just, if we're we making a special, this would be easier and easy. In other words, we wanted to dictate. I don't want to say dictate. I don't want to use that word. I'm trying to get around it. But we want to have guidelines on this, just like we're saying, to hold them to a certain amount. To hold them <laughs> to the roads have to be good roads. You know, they have to provide parking, and you know, we're trying to get it so that there's more here to govern what they're doing. But I don't. Think it's there yet because you, you know, I mean, the zoning commission. I get you know, you're here on their behalf, but keep saying that you know, they got all these regulations and you only put so many per acre, but you can't tell me how many they can put per acre. Well, that's why we're here tonight. That's best right. guess. Yeah. That's I understand your point, Mike, but I just don't want to make it look like we're making this easier. Saying, come here, we made a special zone just for you, so you can stack these on top of each other. It's making it harder. Yeah. It, it, yes. it actually, I, I believe me, I, I. I'm not a big, huge fan of this either, but I think that creating a new ordinance that governs townhouses is better than saying, because... Use R3 and build as many as you want. There's nothing going to stop somebody from saying, well, I mean, you can't have townhouses, I'm going to build apartments. Well, I guess the question was, let's go understand whether or not amending R3 to yeah. accompany this instead of just making a new one. Yeah. Well, I don't think that's going to be an issue. And then they say, well, we got all these regulations, but then we're like, we got things that we want to regulate. But then, you know, we're here, and uh, now we're supposed to make all these decisions right now. We want this, that, and other. And, <coughs> well, I'll see how we can vote on it. I mean, this has been out here for a, a little while. I mean, I, I, I'm the one who met with Julie earlier to discuss some of my concerns. But Jim brought up a good point, and then you yeah. talking about limiting the houses, but I don't. Well, if we uh, say we do nothing with this, we don't put any of this in our regulations it's not in there now right? right just leave it like it is now when somebody comes in and asks about what's what do you require for these and you say well we don't have any regulations for those does that mean they cannot build them legally i mean if we don't have a regulation to regulate them then sorry pal you can't build it so the response was then instead of townhomes we'll do apartments because you have regulations that allow those. Right. Well, I, I, I agree with what Mike said. Yeah. I, I have a totally different opinion than Mike, and uh, I have spoke, spoken about it, and I haven't changed a bit. Uh, we look at smart growth, and I mean, the, if you have some of this, and I don't agree with this on the whole county, but if you have some of this where you have sewer, then that protects farmland somewhere else and I was at a meeting in Shelby County and they have a they have a limit where you have to have five acres for a house so it's and I may mention that to y'all last meeting but anyhow so you only get one house on five acres and here we can have a house on an acre so we can have five families you can have your kids and your grandkids and your great grandkids and another family live on five acres not in Shelby County, only you. So where we want our kids to live. So we can't put a stop sign, in my opinion, up and say we got to stop. Now, hopefully I live to be old, and I'm, I'm older than you, Michael, by a good bit, <laughs> but 20 years or so. I'm but so you guys made it. Right? Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, that uh, that looks pretty good. But, uh, but then at the same time, I'll, I also disagree uh, with, with your your thought on the uh, see being in a more condensed area and I disagree with Jim a little about the thicker you get them the more they'll argue and stuff but you know there are lots of folks that live in, in neighborhoods and they they look after one another and it's good and uh, typically you know if you have a, let's say you have one of those buildings and and the average age in there is 60 uh, they, they know one another and it's right here in town. The ambulance can boom, be right there. The police can boom, be right there. Uh, you know, it's different than driving way out there where I live or driving way up there where we live. And, uh, you know, there, there's advantages. Uh, painting a picture of, of everything bad, in my opinion, is just inaccurate. There are advantages to this. Well, I will say, if you don't want to get rid of it, I don't think any of us is prepared to vote yes on this 
tonight because we've all brought up concerns and maybe we would like to forward those concerns back to the Planning and Zoning Committee before our next meeting and figure out, you talked about smart growth here close to town, and we all know that if they get you know built out to here, then the sewer runs into that road, and somebody's tacking on into that, into that, into that, and they say, you know, town becomes my backyard over on Hardesty Ridge. The sewer plant one can't keep up that. Well, place. I mean, but, you know, but these builders making millions of dollars, they'll just they'll build their own plant. I mean, you work right behind them. You got to think of it both ways. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was ready to vote on it with recommendations from the fiscal court. But I'm saying we don't know what yeah. those rec recommendations are. I think some of us do. I mean, I want to put a cap on how many units you can put yes. per I lot. And I think the rest of it's. Can we just send it back with recommendations without voting on it tonight? I mean, if we recommend something and we say, yes, we're going to approve this, you all don't have to accept those recommendations, do you? No, but I mean, what you all can do, if you all want to set it, that, you know, you can only have 10 units per acre or, I mean, whatever. I was or an increase in Yeah, I mean, then, you know, we would just rewrite it how you all say you want it. You know, because at this point, it has to go to the city, too. It has to go to the city as well. They have to pass it. Right, so I have to have it pass the same in both places, so. Yeah, I would like to say that we would send it back to you with the recommendation of no more than 15 units per acre. Before you do that, Corey just brought a pretty good point, just to bring to you. What if we just up the lot size? Yeah. Well, no, the green space, so. Well. Either one, I'm just kind of lot size, but I mean, that was just, it's the 2000 growing out, but yeah, the 2000 for the lot size, 50 would increase that, that would not be probably another thing you have an acre. So. The, the thing so that, what, what you would be doing though, at that point, did you mean that means they're going to have a deeper backyard and a deeper front yard? Right. Because they're not going to get much wider with these units. Right. So yeah. if you, if you live at the number of units and it doesn't fill up the whole acre, then you're going to automatically increase the green space yeah so well she said that 17 more likely 13 you just said 15 so 15 ain't really restricting anything more than what they already got I mean, what I, I went and talked about 13 I mean I was just saying that <coughs> I don't know what the numbers are but I mean that's what I think that's what I mean the still going to be pretty tight well if you read this though they'd have to change the ordinance says they can have up to 12 on a, in, a, in one continuous uh, section. Yeah. So I could I could agree with 12. That's what makes you feel more comfortable. Would you like to put that in a motion to approve it as is, but change it to limit of 12 per acre? Yes. I make a motion that we uh, change the. Uh, the density, or we add the density to uh, 12 units <coughs> per acre to this ordinance. That is a maximum of 12 units. A maximum of 12 units per acre. And, and, to this and, and recommend the passage of the rest, basically. Well, yes. We're so approving it as is with the, the, the limitation of with 12 With the limitation of 12 units per acre. All right. Nobody else has any other recommendations, or is that all of them? Yeah. The rest of it's pretty quite dry. Yeah. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. We have a motion by Dan and seconded by Will uh, to approve the uh, recommendation to us from fiscal court on the 500.1 uh, single family townhome districts with the uh, change of language of a limit of 12 per acre. Is there any discussion? I'm still going to vote no. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Judge Travis? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Cotton? Yes. Squire Scott? No. Squire Ferris? Yes. Squire Eldridge? Yes. Motion passes 5 to 1. We'll send that back to them, and then you'll have to coordinate with the city. I'm not sure when the city is taking this up. Have you had a first reading? I haven't. I usually try to get through one before I go to the other. There's a change. Okay. 
Because they may make changes also, and then I'll come back to you with their changes. Yeah, just like Washington okay. when you get to that point. So, so. Okay. All right. All right. Is that it, Julie? That's it. All right. Thank, Thank you very, very much. And I encourage you guys to read if you haven't all the minutes of their meeting. Uh, it's quite interesting. A lot of discussion. Better reading than our minutes. I think it's a lot, a lot of discussion. Uh, we'll go on with communications. Uh, Chris is not here tonight. Uh, I'll roll through these. Uh, Y'all have something to say, we'll say it. But safety committee, anything, Dan? Nothing to report. All right, solid waste, Jim? Nothing to report. Veterans? Uh, the only thing is, we if you notice a black flag out there now hanging on the uh, war memorial, then we did add a, for the latest uh, service that uh, we've had now for probably two years, the Space Force. So, that's what that black flag is up there. <laughs> and, and, and talking to, uh, since we're on veterans again, there's been, unfortunately, and Jim mentioned it in his prayers, uh, we've had a lot of half staff raising and lowering, raising and lowering. And uh, I know uh, Dan and, and a couple other veterans in town uh, that, that are in town pretty regular, uh, folks that call my office if they're not down. We, we do our best to get them up and down. If they're supposed to be down and they're not, call. And I, I change them myself. It's easy. Uh, or any of you guys, so, if they're wrong, change them. They just came out today. They will be at half staff again tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. I say that's what I got you know, right All right. But Jeff, watch us. If they're supposed to be up or down, yeah. holler and I'll take care of it. But uh, it, it's. And, un and it's unfortunate. It's a very unfortunate that, that a lot of things have been happening. But we'll we'll do our best to get. I take care of this one and the one outside my door. Uh, and I'll go to the. I went to the bank before and, and talked to them about their place so, across the street. All right. Thank you for that equipment, uh, Zach. Nothing to report. Well, All right. Telecommunications, Zach. Nothing to report. Let me add that. Uh, uh, Brittany had a fella come and look about changing our microphones and stuff. Yeah, but we haven't gotten a lot done yet. Yeah, yeah, it's but but we got somebody looking. And we'll before we do anything, you guys will will, will decide ourselves as a group. Uh, Ministry of Coal, Board, nothing. Uh, two areas of economic development, Dan. Uh, nothing to report other than well, that was in the last meeting where yeah we are hired a uh, tourism and economic development and uh, person so all right uh, i wanted to mention uh, on this subject and uh, we don't have to vote but uh, where do you guys now, now she has the ability to work uh, if everything works out and we hire her in the first of may she has the ability to work remotely but uh, we probably need she needs a, an office somewhere uh, would you all agree I would agree with that. And I think Dan has looked some and I've talked to Brittany about office space uh, and there's really nothing that suits very well. Uh, Frankie Owen has that shop right across the way yeah. that's open right now. And uh, I think you actually looked at it already. Yeah, I looked at it Friday. If you want to speak on it. I mean, I talked to him, but I don't know what y'all talked yeah, about. It, it needs, I'll, I'll, if y'all don't mind, I'll share a couple things on it. The, I did look at it. It it, it needs some work. Uh, he had a pretty good pretty good fair price, uh, but I don't know what he would need after he did some work. Uh, I talked to him today, and he said they was doing drywall work in there, and uh, maybe you mentioned the floors. Yeah. And he said if we come up with something and uh, approach him with it, he would be able to work with us. He thought so. Okay. Well, another option we have in this me personally it's a little farther in town but the arnold realty down here at the four way i talked to uh miss arnold to susan i talked to her about it and it's supposedly moved in ready it supposedly has some furniture i haven't been inside but uh, she asked she quoted me 800 a month ready to move in so anyway that's an option there is a uh up above where the courtroom is, up mm -hmm. in the, there is a empty space up there 
there's a uh, there's a meeting room up there, I guess, where they meet with uh, people like if they're mediating something. But then uh, next to it, there's a judge's office, and then there's an empty office where there's a bunch of books <coughs> on the shelf, which I would assume the judge uses that also. But then next to that, there's an empty office space that just has a bunch of uh, clutter thrown in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing we need to talk about, we talked to Randy about is the office that's next to him, which, but then Lynn also was talking about needing more room, which I tried to catch him, and I did not catch him. You know, another option is, I don't know, the, the building here where Southern County is just me, that those front offices where the state of Kentucky had offices, there's two offices right here. Uh, they may be available, too, because there's nothing else. I got, I'm I'm like going to go to the well, so. Explore the idea of maybe something that we already own for the, but, you know, and I was just sitting here thinking to myself, you know, I think part of this position, you know, it's remote, you know, and it's not like she needs a big lavish deal with conference room and everything, but, you know. You know, what, what we do, do need something that's appealing to a mm -hmm. out-of-town visitor that's wanting to build their company here. I agree with that. For example, uh, you know, Ain't much appealing in that spirit of court we, we need we, we need an, an, an appealing place and preferably my preference would be in town here i mean when we have our center built one day soon hopefully uh we can put a new office in there and that'd be the first place you stop when you come to town it's right out there and uh, but you know we'll need to get by and, and i'll just i'll just uh, uh, commit to you all to, <coughs> I'll be, we'll be looking, and next meeting we'll have some options. Uh, we'll, we'll be brand new next meeting, but uh, I'll get some options together. And I'll, I'll try to have photos and money to where maybe we can make a, make a call next meeting. That's who's there about Sounds good. All right. Thank you all. Uh, animal Shelter, Dan? Uh, nothing really. Just still researching some uh, uh, to find a... A uh, builder or an, and uh, an architect, someone who can give us uh, some stamp prints. All right, thank you. Building grounds, Will? Uh, hopefully, next <coughs> week they'll work on the courthouse, the brick people. Uh, I didn't talk to them today. I tried to get a hold of much of the message. The courthouse roof is a disaster. Uh, really, you or Brittany, uh, the adjuster will not return a phone call. All right. To the roof. Yes. We, we discussed that after the last meeting. Well, I left another message Friday. Okay, so we, did, we didn't get we didn't get an answer, but I'm going to make a note here. Yeah, we we'll see. get on that tomorrow. You were ready day. to get a hold of Justin. Yeah. Well, I've left, in my well, I've left. Uh, the last thing he said is that we didn't replace our roof, and Brittany sent him the invoices from where we did replace yeah. our roof. Right. And he's not returned my call, and he's not return the call of the roofer that's coming with this roof. Right. And I know we were wanting to hook up that roofer with the adjuster. Yeah. We can't get back to the adjuster. Uh, if Brittany has a number or someone above, yeah. something needs to happen. Uh, and then other things, some stuff we talked about in the courthouse last meeting, I'm waiting on a second quote. Uh, and hopefully it'll be here before this time next year. You, you may be thinking something, you know, we've got that ambulance that needs a transmission that somebody broke in the one transmission place, stole the Cadillac converter off. Y'all remember that? It's still sitting there. Well, Chris, I see Chris nearly daily. And I told Chris this morning, I said, you need to call that guy because I'm not going to be down to one or two ambulances right. again. So the last one we voted on, they haven't even started on? They haven't started on? The one we voted on to take to Atlantic to fix the transmission is still sitting at the other shop because they can't get parts for the, the Cadillac converter stuff. So I've been after Chris, and he come in today. I said, you call him again and get after him. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Anyway, the, he, the guy called back while I was sitting in there, while Chris was still in the office. And uh, these parts have not been in production, but they're going to get it next week, and they're going to get it put on. So hopefully before the 1st of May, it'll be at Atlantic where they can put the transmission in. So, anyway, thanks for jogging my memory on that. Uh, Parks and Recreation, Mike. 
Uh, as far as Waterford's concerned, nothing to report. Uh, Brian reached out to me late Friday, and uh, I know that in our previous meeting, he had put together some quotes for sealing and striping the parking lot at Ray Jewel. Now, he called me on Friday, and he, I guess now he's second-guessing whether that needs to be done or not. He wants to have he wants me to look at it to give him a second opinion and maybe he, it ain't as bad as he initially thought it was after he got to look at it or whatever. So, um, I'm going to go look at that this week and, and I'll even provide a recommendation to move forward with quotes he has or or, go, or, 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 or not do it and we'll, we'll address that later. Do we have water at Waterford Park yet? Or has that been started? No. Or it's, I got on it again this morning. If, if you don't mind, Mike, I'll okay. tell you where I'm at. Um, the, the leak may be under where we put the new gravel and where we put the culvert in the ditch. Apparently, when everything's turned off, you turn the water meter on, the meter's spinning. So it's leaking somewhere. All right, my instructions were find a water line and cap it on the field side of the ditch. Yeah, we said about middle ways of the line. Yeah, then turn it on again, and if it's leaking, then we know it's from the cap area to the meter, and probably we just need to put a new line from that spot, and we don't have to dig through blacktop at this point. If the water line is, if it's leaking beyond that, or let's say we cap it's it not spinning, and it's not spinning, spinning, then we're going to have to dig through some blacktop and dig through the ball field. And it's not it. leaking. We don't have a run until it. We don't have something in the concession thing. I put more John there. Because they were without. I think he was asking to make sure, like, a tool that ain't yeah. continuously running, like, you know, there's a water leak. I personally haven't went and looked at the meter, but everyone is telling me, like, I'm telling well, you all. Well, I'm just saying, we yeah. don't have a shut off at the concession stand to shut the, the bathrooms off and stuff. I mean, like, at the building? Like yeah. next, like I'm building. trusting that they have they've already exhausted that option. Is the road department working on this? Uh, Who's working on this? Randy. Randy and Brian. I met with Randy and Brian down at the park while you was gone. And, and, they, and, the and pretty much the, they said that they rebuilt everything inside the bathrooms and the concession stand because when they turned it on this spring, it just it was not properly winterized. They said it was, but not every pipe burst it was. So uh, so they had to rebuild everything, the concession stands, repipe and everything. So they, <coughs> they know that they, they, they said they ain't got a full leak in and they checked all that. I went through all the same stuff that you brought up, and uh, they don't have a shut off at the building. Well, uh, I don't get it to be. Yeah, put in. Well, they, they, had, they, had had a leak, they had a leak under the concrete when it first opened. But yeah. according to Randy, yeah, when they fixed that, and they had to make sure everything was off, and they turned that meter on, it was just like spinning so fast, like it was that little thing was like a blur in there. So I doubt it's pulling. But anyway, I will go look at it myself. Uh, I did go down to Ray Jewel today. They've got a few more dead trees they want to cut. And there's a there's like a cluster of dead trees this big in one cluster that needs to come out. I tied a pink ribbon around it. Y'all go down there. But uh, other than that, they got it in great shape. There was a, a lady and her husband walking their dogs, and she said they'll walk every day, and they love it. And I have got a lot. So, you talk about Walker Ray. Right, this is Ray Jewel. I have gotten a lot of compliments on uh, Waterford Park, and they and everybody's utilizing that new parking lot down there. It's full. It was full on my way in here. So, yeah. So far, it's like what they've done down there. So. But anyway, I will check that out at Waterford, and I'll, I want because I've been thinking about that, Zach. I want to see it with my own eyes. But uh, well, I'd say something anyway, that's pretty fast with our plumbers. Well, that's that's already in the. I already, I already told uh, Randy to get a plumber. I think it's coming Wednesday. Who's our plumber? Well, a plumber. Oh, yeah, we've done half one, 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 one water bill on this already? Well, that was, well, that was the two. EMS building. Oh, uh, yes, sir. You are correct. You are correct. But anyway, that's uh, anything else on park, Mike? No, that's it. All right. Uh, I'd like to mention real quick just to uh, well, get all together in a great duel tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the school is tearing up an old playground behind the SCS. Uh, Country County Elementary School is going to be a new playground. Uh, there's some rubber rides and there. They're going to, they're just going to throw away. They're going to put that port in place back and put the new one in. Uh, 
I'm gonna be hauling it. But it's just spotted dump truck out there from the haul in too. We can take that extra grain fuel so we can use it on our playground. So, so we get it free mulch, yeah. free rubberized mulch. Yeah. You want to repurpose it? When will we hear back from some of them grants? I mean, they'll they'll be on up. On up, and I need to get after the. Because uh, they have to be put in by like the first of this month or something. They're put in. Right. They're put in, but they'll there'll be answers coming as we go along. We got letters of support uh, from I know Senator Higgin and Representative Tipton for the payment papers. I actually saw those. So, but anyway, we'll we'll be finding out about those. Uh, are you anything else? Uh, on the market, the, the tire industry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm on top of that for this fall, and Karen hasn't gotten back with me as to what it's going to cost per truckload if we have one, you know, this spring. So, but I'm, I'll keep you posted on that. We're still set to have the one in July and the one in fall, right? We have one, one <coughs> spring, summer, and then a big one in the fall. Yeah, the fall is a gigantic every three years. Okay. So, all right, Jim, I'm sorry. Yeah, to the farm market. The committee, the building committee is just talking with a, a builder uh, to, he says he can secure uh, a company to uh, draw the plans up for it and, uh, and get all, all that, that site work uh, uh, done on it, as far as plans, parking lots and all that. And uh, anyway, uh, he's he's getting that together he said everybody everybody's busy you can't get anybody doing anything you know like everybody else same thing with the animal shelter like Dan said we you know waiting on engineers you know see about what it's going to cost to do that so we're still kind of waiting for that right now that's it all right uh, and i know you know we we were looking to acquire the property for mr sweezy and uh, the deal uh, the beehive that he's selling that that we our appraisal I guess appraisers will need for a comp. That's supposed to close before the end of the month. You know it's supposed to close in February. I know in March. Uh, yeah, I know. So but anyhow, that's it. But I think we've got six months to yes to purchase that land. Yes or not. So yeah. we're okay. So yeah it's still okay. All right, uh, we're gonna get into old business. Uh, the county clerk resolution should be in your packet there on page 57. And uh, uh, then the, uh, when we voted for the portables, the, uh, the grant for House Bill 1 was 160 something. The poll books come out of the grant or is it out of a different pot? Two different pots. Two different pots. Okay. Yeah, this is a totally new grant. That's to my knowledge the other day. I don't have any information. Well, it's you're you're aware of the House Bill One grant that you presented to our office. It's been a while ago. All right, I will represent it for you. Okay. There's a there's a House Bill One. The clerk is is requesting one hundred thirty thousand seven hundred ninety eight dollars, and we need to pass a resolution uh, for her to you see in your packets on page fifty nine uh, from Hart that she presented to, to my office for the 137.98 for the scan bundle and the do old standalone and the print bundle with printer bag verified drives auto ballot kit but my understanding and you can just answer you know if i got this correct the house bill one is a grant that county clerks can apply for through the fiscal courts to get additional the voting equipment and that's what this is for correct that's my understanding okay so we have a resolution there on page 60 and uh, basically uh, we will be uh, uh, we can submit this grant application for up to hundred hundred thirty thousand seven hundred ninety eight dollars and uh, if we approve this resolution tonight then that will give uh, her and the uh, local uh, election board the opportunity to apply for this and uh, then when she could get some additional get these additional funds for increased uh, amounts of voting equipment 
and I believe that you mentioned to me that if we were to go back to the precinct voting,s we wouldn't have enough machines like at the particular firehouses, correct? Okay. And if you were given this grant, then you have machines to go back to the firehouses. We're not going back to precinct. If the legislature forces more voting locations, we might have to go to other locations. Okay. These are print-on-demand machines that will print ballots on demand. Okay. Are these above the ones we've got now? Okay. Sure. And what what's the difference? Because we, we, we paid 160, I believe, for new what was it 12, 13 of them, like two years ago? Maybe 15. 15, whatever. Now, so if that was the state of the art at that point, mm -hmm. what, what is this? I mean, it's free equipment. It's what? Free equipment. I understand it, but what, what, what do these do? That, the these machines, we've machines got now? print on demand. They will print a ballot on demand. What is we this? have right now, we send ballots out and they scan the ballots. Right. It's but all the same company that manufactures these. It's just a different type of voting machine. Okay. When the last court voted to buy the new machines, mm -hmm. okay. That was supposed to be it. As far as I, you know, I was concerned. You know, we've got new voting machines. We don't need any more. You know, and then we we did. You know, this. I mean, I, I can't understand it. Was it just because it's free money? Let's do it. It's a different type of voting machine. This prints ballots. The other machines do not print ballots. Legally, which one can you use? We can use them all. Okay, either one. Yeah. They've been certified by the federal government, by the state government, by the state board of election. Okay, my all question the is then the, the 15 voting machines that we bought two years ago, mm -hmm. we can use all of those and then we can use all of these also. So we're going to have a total of 28, uh, 20, 29. And you can place how many of those in each precinct? We have both centers now. We don't have precincts. And, how, and how, how many vote centers do we have? We have my office, we have two early voting locations, and we have three on election day, we have six. Right. Well, what I'm saying is, uh, on May the 16th, uh, <coughs> the voting day, mm -hmm. we've got three locations. Mm -hmm. Are we going to put these 29 or 30 voting machines in no, those? absolutely not. Well, we, we won't well, have then what? But if we did, then We're why not are going we? to. I think they're pushing for more locations, yeah. my understanding, so she's trying to prepare, if they do that, to have the equipment available, to my understanding. I know voting, there was a, some concern about, because all through the state, you know, we'd go into these voting centers, and they were, I know, here in Spencer County, trying to vote, you have to stand in line for you know, 45 minutes. Well, that's because you've got less locations to vote at than we have. Well, it, yes, but that that was set by the, the state decided to do that, and now that they've done that, they realize that maybe that wasn't a great idea, so maybe we need to to develop some new, some more locations. So instead of having three in Spencer County, maybe we'll have five. Well, I think right now we're only voting on a resolution to apply for the grant. Yeah. grant. So I don't see why we wouldn't do that. It's pretty cut and dry to me. The House Bill 1 is a bill passed by the legislature last year that allocated $12.5 million for the purchase of new voting equipment for counties. Spencer County's portion is $132,000. So that's the reason. I make a motion that we approve the resolution. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion by Will and seconded by Dan that we approve the resolution, <coughs> which uh, states for the grant application of for up to one hundred thirty thousand seven hundred ninety-eight dollars. And uh, if we pass this, I will sign this and uh, give it to the clerk. So we have a motion by Dan, second by Will. You got that one offer. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Motion by Will, second by Dan. Yes. I'm sorry about that. All right. Any other discussion? I got one question. Yes. Is this do do we pay for this up front out of the general fund and get reimbursed, or is this a grant that's going to come and? I think it's paid paid for through the grant money. 
the grant comes to DLG. So we'll have the grant money to pay for the machines? We will not get the machines before next year. No, I know, but we'll get the grant money I will. and then we'll buy the I machines. I can't later. say that for certain. All right. Now, none of the fans are on the hook for 130 hoping that you get the money. I don't think we're voting to be on the hook, are we? No, we're voting for the Yeah, yeah. 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 It comes down to that, and if you don't want to buy it, you say we don't want to buy it. <laughs> yeah, and it's, I mean, it's up to that much. Right. I mean, we're going to buy it. So we won't spend more than that, but we can spend less than that, I guess. All right. Any other discussion? Uh, Madam Clark, if you would call the roll, please. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Cotton? Yes. Squire Stump? Yes. Squire Ferris? Yes. Squire Eldridge? Yes. Judge Travis? Yes. Motion passes. <coughs> All right. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, we do have in the packet on these quotes for uh, Ray Jewel, but Mike, we will put those off so you can go look. Uh, I looked at it today and I don't know what to look for either. I mean, the parking lot looks pretty good. It strikes me pain. I'm just going pretty bad. I'm going to look at it with Brian. I mean, yeah. If I think it's something we may just do away with just striping instead of resetting, yeah. you know, on you know, and But I'll come back and we'll yeah. discuss it then. Yeah, we, we can always discuss it later. So, anyway, thank you, thank you for that. I would look at this to be sure, you know, if you think it's going to need sealed next year, right, we yeah. probably shouldn't <laughs> strike it, you know. <laughs> And then well, the last meeting we had questions about these quotes. Yeah, I was looking at those two quotes. Were they redone or not? No, they still look like the you know, I, I got a little better understanding. I, yeah, I, they're better than what they were. I quizzed Brian about them. And I mean, this one for 8700 we, we don't need to seal the walking track. Right. We don't need to do that at all. But I mean, this 8700 one, it, it has striping check, but it says prep area. And of course, another bid had striping of $900. Uh, but but anyhow uh, well I think if your recommendation is to do something you should ask about the quotes right because of, yeah but I mean I, I'm happy with myself I, you know you we're sitting here together uh, six of us but if somebody wanted to move we could or we can we don't have to do anything and Mike can meet with Brian and come up with something that I think somebody meets with him because quite frankly I don't know what we're doing well, well, I know what we're doing, but well, I don't know what That was kind of my thing. I wanted to meet with him, and I want him to tell me exactly what his thoughts are when he looked at it, you know, what's his areas of concern, and versus, you know, yeah, I think if the strikes are that faded, it should just be resealed and strike. Right. Somebody needs to go put eyes on it. All right. All right, we'll just, uh, we'll just skip that and move on. Everybody's good? Uh, last item here on the three. Uh, old business, Rachel Park, all that. I wanted to mention, uh, and Sandy is here. Of course, I didn't ask Sandy to come for this, and, you, and uh, I'm just pointing you out on the crowd again. But uh, I want to, uh, and I've talked to this to you guys, uh, I think every single one. Uh, we got to get a better entrance into our new radio Park. Right now, the only way in is by the dollar store. So, I want to, uh, basically, I, I guess I'm asking for a blessing from you guys or uh, uh, give me an order. Uh, and I mentioned last meeting about working with the mayor on uh, building athletic for the kids here in the old ball field. Um, and Karen and I have, the mayor and I have spoke about uh, both of us approaching the school board uh, at a meeting to discuss uh, possibly getting together to uh, get volunteers, number one, to work here in town. Uh, when we did the old ball court, there were volunteers that are ready to donate money to do stuff. And But they gotta have a goal. They gotta say, we're doing this work for X. They can't just say, here's some money, do something. So we wanna take that approach downtown. And then uh, at, at Ray Jewel, I'm gonna ask the, uh, uh, the Matt Bullock from District 5, the road department, and James Allen, uh, Tipton, and I, Representative Tipton, we're having a meeting this week to discuss different road projects and, on state roads. Uh, we've actually started the process 
of, of looking at what Kipta has identified as, as bad areas. But anyway, while I got him in the office, I was going to ask him about the ability for us to get under the bridge and connect both Ray Fuel Parks. I don't know what he'll say, but I'm going to ask. If that option falls flat on its face, uh, we need to approach the school board to try to get uh, some sort of access easement uh, along the highway there where you turn into the school to get go down and get to Ray Hill Park. You talking about over by the grounds or the yeah. football field? Yeah, over along the four, the four way. Because I'm pretty sure, and I mean, I'm going to ask Matt Bullock about us getting an access that's so close to the bridge, I'm really doubtful. And then it's so high from where we are to where the road is, uh, the best the best way is to go through the school. And I thought the mayor and I could, could come in together and, and make an argument to uh, try to get assistance on both those projects. Uh, go I, ahead. Got, I got a question, but why, just, just, I'm just asking, but why are we wanting to get an entrance off the four lane to, down the regular park? To the new regular park. Yeah, I know. Why, why are we, why, if we can't get the walking bridge underneath the underneath there, you want to just put in another entrance to get down there? Well, I want to come in off of the school's entrance yeah. and then just follow the fence yeah. and go down with a gravel road yeah. that later we'll pay. Yeah. Because <coughs> we, we're not going to be able to use the entrance at the dollar store to access this whole area. I don't see any way in the world we can. You know, imagine. 200 cars in there pulling out at once at the dollar store. Well, I, I do agree with that, but I just don't know that it's going to be much better to be up there at the high school either. So I think it's going to be a problem no matter where we're going to be at with that. Well, we, then we have to, you guys give me another well, one. If, if the one under the bridge, that would be the, the most likely spot, I would say. I don't I think that would ever happen. If the state will allow that. I think that you'll get a walking path underneath there, but as far as... I would look at it. There's, there's, there's enough room to put a, put a road a road under there. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's probably room, but I'm, I'm just saying they probably ain't going to let you do it. They're not going to give you us each to do it. I was talking to someone about this the other day, and he probably right. looked into it more, but they said uh, one of those gentlemen uh, helped build Ray Gill, did a lot of the work down there. He said originally... <laughs> Yeah, they had an easement or something worked out because that park was supposed to be built over there. Yes, it was. In 2009 is when the county acquired that to build a park. Now, is there any paper trail of something under the bridge or no? That was just all hearsay. Yes. I checked that out and I went to PBA. I looked at deeds. Uh, it doesn't show that we own under the bridge. I, I also once thought that we did. Who owns under the bridge? The state? state. Well, I say you, you go and ask. If they say no, then don't want no foul. If they say yes, then we got another option to consider later. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out what the thought process was while we were looking at possibly putting another entrance. So, we need to come off the school entrance and we can have it right to the left of the football field. It's all real flat. Right. I mean, you got to drop down on the hill. But, right. Uh, but anyway, for, for us to utilize that facility, that whole area, I mean, we've got 31 acres. You want to speak to us, Andy? Um, no? <laughs> yeah, we just, we'll just need to make sure our lawyers know that when we looked at uh, purchasing property before from Sweezy, and the, one of the stipulations is where our entrance in the school was, they wanted to be able to use that entrance, and they're not allowed to. The school will not allow us, the, district, the state will not allow us to build a road for someone else's access. So it would have to be something totally different as that's what I recall. So with the, uh, the Kentucky Department of Education, the, the legislature, the laws on schools are kind of restricted. So we'll have to run it through our, our lawyer and all, get your ducks in a row and make sure that happens so we can figure out the possibility. You know, and, and if I hope everyone understands, we got to have another way to get in there. We, we can't rely on coming in the dollar store and driving a mile all the way around there to play ball and then driving a mile back out. I mean, I have trouble getting out of the dollar store right now. If it's at a busy time. Well, if we put the apple shelter in there and stop in behind the dollar store and that, and that becomes 
our only access point in and out for the new part of the portion of the park, and we'll have to petition the state for a red light. Yeah, that that entryway to the next to the dollar store, I don't it's I don't know if it's wide enough for two cars to pass on that. It's thirty five feet is all it exists for a hundred feet. It's thirty five well, feet wide. The driveway itself. Right. Looks like that bear when we get there. Yeah. But but anyhow, just as we move forward, and I wanted to bring up to you guys also, please, uh, have y'all noticed where the stakes are? Yeah, right in there, while well, it's dry, you look at the stakes of where our property is. It's, it's a straight line with the school to a point, and then it jogs toward the creek about 50 feet, and then it follows kind of like the flood wall. Of course, it's not a flood wall, but it's where the flooding goes. It follows it around to the four lane. And I've got fence posts with ribbons. But drive in there and look. And when you drive in and you look, there's piles of dirt where they did work at the school. Do not drive on the slope of that bank because you will break the front end out of your whatever you're driving. If you're going five mile an hour, you're afraid you tore up something and you're going to have to walk. Luckily, I didn't have to. But I know where they are now. I tried to use my zero turn and mow up and down. But anyway. There's rough sandy about yay deep, about yay wide. But uh, anyway, there's dirt down in the flooded part that floods. There's piles of trees. There's a couple of bushes. There's six, eight bushes in one little spot. I mean, it'd be great if we hired somebody with a dozer or we volunteers, of course, volunteers built Waterford Park, a lot of it, and Radio Park. But we need to have all that. What I'd like to see us do, get all that leveled out. I bring a big disc up there, disc it all up, so it fescue, and now we got places for them to play ball. Anyway, it won't cost a lot of money, but it's just an idea I have. And if anybody has uh, anything else, I mean, I think we have identified that we need to create more places to play, and this is the place we own. <coughs> so what action do, do we want to take? If y'all want to ponder on it, I'll put an agenda item next time if y'all like. So what are you asking for? Just to go ahead and, and ask those right. questions? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, I want to ask those questions. I want to uh, go with the mayor, Jeff. Just to kind of back up what she said, uh, the city of Taylorsville got that sidewalk grant in 2017 for the high school. Is that, did they, do you know if it was a land and water conservation? It was. Okay. But it's, it's nowhere closer to being done now than it was in 2017. Yeah. And, but because that, Kentucky yeah. Education Department. Correct. So that's another thing about the school property. Even if they say okay, it could take forever. It could take forever. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean that's a that's a good argument I want to make Thursday to the right. district five. Well the argument that I would make to them would not be the one that stayed on their side of the fence, not the school side of the fence. Now that could be another option. Yeah, if we could think. get on the state side, we, we can come right down and get you in there. You use that entrance to go into the school property because it's a four-lane highway and four optical uh, entrance, but you can just stay as long as we put the road on the state's property. That's another option, yes, sir. That is. Well, that's, that's the argument I would make. Not, right. That's, I wouldn't make the argument in the school. I agree. The argument is just, that was the state. Yeah, you just don't I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that, and, and I don't, and I'll just, I'll see what they say. But yeah, it is, and the right of way there would be very large. It would be all the way to the fence. Yeah, Every, so, everything to that fence is the state. state. The state road. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing so, there is going to have to be up to come to a state road, I would say. So the gravel and block probably later will be out the window. They're not going to let you come off this 44. Well, they might just give, me, give them easy, you know, and it was a few people want to do it. But anyway, you see what happens Thursday when it's not May 1st. Yeah, I mean, if y'all are good with me going the, the route on trying to get an option to get into Ray Jewel. So all right. General yes. consent, we yes. good? Okay. All right, now I do challenge you all to look in there and come up with a better idea than what I suggested about we get somebody with a dozer. I mean, I volunteer my dozer, but my track broke in half. My tracks are junk. But anyway, uh, I got a dozer I'll bring down there. 
Y'all, y'all look it over. Y'all look it over, and I'll bring a big tractor and disc and seed sower, and we'll sow the grass, and then we'll have it where it can be molded. Anybody wants to come play baseball, they can go right in there and play baseball. We're all good with that. We'll just we'll operate that way. Anyone object? Y'all good? Good, Tim. All right. We'll just move on from there. Uh, new business. Uh, we have a two resolutions here with ARPA funds. Before I forget, Lynn, I want to pass, I need to pass that, I'll leave it out here in a minute. I need to pass that resolution down to you to sign. But, because uh, this is also a resolution that we got to get signed. All right, I have two resolutions. You see the, the first one is, uh, we have to pass a resolution that basically sums up that since, since we got under $10 million, we can use the funds uh, to pay for other government services, and we have to have a resolution in order to do that. That's what the first resolution on page 69 is. We'll need to entertain a motion to pass that resolution. I'll make the motion. Second. All right, we have a motion by Zach, seconded by Mike, to approve the resolution to use uh, the, the remainder of the, our ARPA funds for regular government services. Is there any discussion? Uh, we'll go ahead. I would, I brought this up the last week. <laughs> I'm afraid that we're going to, you know, I, I agree with this, but I think there there needs to be some offset to say that uh, you know, at the end of spending this $3 million on, uh, on our expenses, do we have $3 million somewhere that yes. we can use? It, 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 it will show. It, it, if you look on your, you know, on your bill, it will get spent and somewhere you know, else. Stay, yeah. that's, that's what I'm afraid of. That's, you know, you know, I mean, you know, you spend $60,000 here and $60,000 there. And no, we another, if, it, uh, if, you, if any packet does, has to, if they would put, what the ARPA funds are, how much we use, and all that, and he did, and I appreciate it. So you can go instead of, instead of going through all the uh, the other monthly uh, uh, papers that he had, this one you can look at and say, okay, we spent this much, we've got to do it. That's how much it should be in the general fund. Yeah, page 67 and 68 has those balances. And if you look on the page 68, uh, these, these three trucks, they're the F-550s that haven't arrived. And then the 500,000 that the previous court devoted to uh, broadband. Uh, I can't explain the fire department refund, maybe Doug knows. That's what we donated to the fire department. Yeah, they're there. I think it had, there was something where it's legally they had to reimburse we gave the money and they reimbursed us for it legally, you know, on papers. Okay. Yeah. I remember that. some sort of garbage if when we spend this, say, $60,000 ARPA funds, $60,000 comes out of the general fund or something and goes in a different line and it stays there. If not, we'll spend all this money and won't have it. Right. We'll yeah. have nothing. Yeah, put somewhere you can't see. Okay. No, well, I, mean, I, I think we, no. we, we ought to all be clear that, that, that we've got right now, it, on, on page 68, we've got 2.7 million dollars right now. After the 500,000 comes out for broadband, after all the vehicles are paid for, and all that. So at that point, we've got 2.7 million dollars to spend for the animal shelter and the pavilion. Okay, uh, and that's not going to change. It, it, it's going to show you know, in the general fund. Regardless, because we're not spending. We'll just say take it out of the general fund, put it in another spending fund that we can use it. So we're not putting the general not. fund thinking it's falsely inflated. It's like someone who wins the lottery yeah. saying they're not going to go broke. What, 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 about, <laughs> what, what about we do this this way? What about we pass the resolution uh, so it'll be a clean resolution because we'll have to send that to auditors and send that to KIPTA that does our record keeping. And then after that, we can. Uh, we can we can take a motion to where when a penny is expended, a penny is saved. I got one question on this ledger. 
Second. Second. All right, we have a motion by Will, seconded by Mike, that we uh, uh, put a line item together to pity for penny when ARPA funds are expended. Uh, we correlate it, correlate it with the uh, uh, same amount in, in another line item and present it monthly in our financial statement. That's what you say. Well, that sounds good. That's exactly what I said. All right. Is there any more discussion? I don't know. We'll get it figured out. I'm still trying to think what kind of name we'll put on this account. Or I mean, even if it's capital projects or wherever. <laughs> I mean, like but uh, in, anyway, Will's fun. It's, I, I tell you guys, it's, I mean, it ain't like mine, cap, when I write you a check. It's a. Uh, this government business is Will's capital project. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's a busy business. All right, all right. So here, no, no further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all for that. Now, here's here's an example. On page 70, uh, the last court voted to buy two vehicles with ARPA funds for $50,590. Each. No, total. Total. That's 20 something. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. We, I, I need a motion to rescind this resolution for paperwork. We could, it's, this wasn't allowed because it was, it, it was over $30,000, even though it was two vehicles, it wasn't allowed. So we got to rescind it and we had to pay for it out of general funds. So that actually put 50000 more back into the ARPA to take out of general. But we, we need to rescind this no, resolution. What was the reason for that? Because the two vehicles, even though it was two vehicles, they were purchased from the same right. company. Yeah. And yeah. the auditors picked it out the as audit. okay. Right. Yeah. That's picked right. it out as one expenditure that was over thirty thousand dollars and it wasn't big. Yeah, you just got two receipts for one expenditure. And because of the federal guidelines and hoops that you don't through. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Did, right? so, I'll make the motion. All right, we have a motion by Zach. So I second it. Seconded by Dan uh, to rescind resolution number seven, which was dated the sixth day of June of 2022 for the uh, $50,590 uh, ARPA fund uh, appropriation. Well, was this, is this already out of our, our, our ARPA line? Of, Right yes. now, yeah, it's going to grow fifty thousand five hundred ninety dollars. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. If you look on page uh, sixty-seven, where it says Asia Motors, Asia Motors, then the two vehicles. Uh, wow. Yeah. So now, right. one of them been Asian Motors, and the other one had been Bachman Ford, or whoever you want to name off another dealership, would have been okay. It'd been fine. Okay. So they call it. They call it a piece of money. Quote right. Yeah. So, but anyway, it's uh, yeah, we, we can train it. Yeah, we're gonna do it. So, that's good, good deal. So, y'all, so, all right, any other discussion on the motion to rescind this resolution? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of rescinding the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Next on the agenda is Sheriff. Scott, we well, appreciate you enjoying the meeting with us. Uh, I think we have to get Well, yeah. Y'all are right. Y'all are not very good yet. Uh, Y'all are not very good. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, first thing, uh, we've got several things. I'll try to be, be quick here. Uh, uh, we had budgeted five, $500,078,240 as the uh, amount of fees that we were going to turn over to the fiscal board. Say it again, what's the Huh? What's the figure? Five seven eight comma two four zero point zero zero. It's on page seventy nine, Mike. I, I didn't know where we were. Okay. okay. It's got. I jumped a couple of items, but you're up there. Go ahead. Hey. Okay. Uh, but uh, nicely enough, we collected one hundred eleven thousand five hundred thirty six point seventy one more than we budgeted. So there's just some money. Okay. Uh, this. Uh, Scott, you should have signed one of these, right? Uh, well, <coughs> you can have what you can, but anyway, yeah. this has to be put into the minutes. Okay. That's like KRS. All right. So, any questions on that? Okay, now I'm going to pass out. Uh, I'm not required to do this, but I don't think it's a bad idea. 
Uh, I've always tried to keep an open door policy. Uh, if you have any questions, please come to me and ask uh, anytime. Mm -hmm. This is a quarterly report of our activities. All right, three is I'll get. I got two. Yeah. I'm getting Anyway, uh, January, February, March. This is a quarterly report for 2023. Our stats papers. We served 238. It's amazing the amount of papers we serve, but <clears throat> even for this small county. Warrants, uh, we uh, served 70. Arrest was 51. DUIs for the three months was 12. Citations was 106. And work 24 accidents during that three month period. <clears throat> now, when you look at that, there, that doesn't include state police arrest, Taylorville arrest, Fish and Wildlife Rest for anybody else. That's us. Okay. Any questions on that? Uh, how, how come you serve 70 arrest warrants but you only have 51 arrests? Well, they are, the warrants are arrests also. Okay. And then these other arrests are like. Uh, Excluding warrants? You're right. Okay. Yeah. And then the DUIs, we want to separate that out. Well, I think that's something we need to track how many DUIs we have. Uh, so, and if there's anything else that y'all want to add to this, uh, give you more information, I'm fine with that. You know. But this is just kind of something to come up with and start it. Uh, and, you know, of course, I'll come back after three months and get another one. Uh, we have just hired a new officer, uh, Brian Berry. He comes to us from the city of Titusville. I did not go soliciting him to come to the sheriff's office. He came to me asking for a job, and he also applied a couple other places. Uh, I did not want to let someone that's already trained from the county, that knows the county, knows the court system, knows the county attorney, knows everything about, he's just going to wear a different uniform for us. Uh, he uh, worked during the day shift last week with us in the office, kind of getting lined out. This week he's riding with another officer for his FTO. And then it'd be out on his own. Really, he doesn't need left to go with it. It's just a good idea uh, to, you know, go through that phase just so for a lot of those who <clears throat> Any questions on new hire? Okay, I want to talk about the DARE program. Now, this is kind of complicated the way I'm going about it. And uh, you may think I'm putting the cart before the horse, but I want to find out where I'm at here before I go somewhere else. Julie Smith which is my canine officer and patrol officer. She has agreed to go part-time. Uh, her father passed away and she was excited to kind of back off because she kind of get some things settled. Uh, I have talked to the uh, opiate uh, lady that's in, in Frankfurt about how we can pay for the DARE program. What I want to do is the DARE program can be paid for out of that money. Now, I can't pay her whole salary out of it. I can just pay the part when she's actually in the school teaching there. And that's uh, for fifth graders is where they start at. Uh, I'd like to expand that if we can. And it'll also pay for the materials, uh, instructional materials to go along with it. I just want to make sure y'all are okay with me pursuing that. I haven't even talked to the school board about it yet. And I definitely want to talk to, you know, I need their approval to come into their school and start teaching this program, I can't imagine nobody would want to. But, you know, we need to touch those kids when they're very impressionable, and we need to be able to hope, if we save one child out of all of them, we would be uh, So it's a problem, and Scott was in the meeting where uh, Mr. Rucker said, third grade is not where to get this stuff at. You remember that? And that just really shocked me. So, uh, are you all okay with me pursuing that? I will have to pay uh, pay it, and then I have to send it to y'all, and I have to send it to the state board that they approve. Uh, you know, I may spend it, and go, ah, well, it's $10,000, $9,000 of it is okay, $1,000 is not. That's just what it is. And you don't really know until you do it. It's kind of a complicated mess. It's just typical of them giving you money and then making it hard to spend it. Now, Chris Lynch called me one day and he 
told me, I know you talked about the way he's going to cut up the money. Right. Cut up the now, that, now that was just my idea. And, and, that, and that's what I'm trying to say, what you said. Uh, but Chris Lynch says he doesn't see how he can utilize any of the funds other than what's been utilized for the yeah. So, you know, and, and I won't use half of it or, you know, a quarter of it. I'd probably look at these. But I'm going to look for more ways and more programs uh, to use that money. It's, it's a good chunk of money. But good Lord, it's complicated how to use it. How high does it go in grades? It starts fifth grade? If fifth grade is usually where they stay teaching. Okay. But we want it, okay, in fourth grade, uh, the third grade, you know, expand it more uh, and reach more kids all the time. I mean, uh, you expand it, you go the other way. That's what I was going to say. Well, and you might be right. Uh, just, you know, we're still just getting feet wet that. on this, and it depends on what the school system wants. Uh, we will also be working with the city uh, uh, SROs. Uh, they're in the school. and. Uh, we don't want to take away from anything they're doing. Uh, they got a great reputation in the school. They got a great camaraderie among the students, and uh, we want to piggyback off that, you know. So, but I just need before I went to the school board and said, "Hey, this is what we want to do." I wanted to make sure y'all were okay with me using that money in this purpose. Well, I mean, we, you know, y'all. I don't want. I can't speak for everybody, but while we're sitting here tonight. But anyway, you know, I'd like to see what kind of money you think you need myself. Well, I had told Julie Smith to uh, come up with a presentation. Yeah. She, uh, due to her father's passing and everything, she wasn't really ready tonight. Uh, if you all want me to, I can come back next meeting and have her present uh, about how much your material so I have to find out how many fifth graders we got on average, yeah. how much materials we need, and like I said, I'm kind of just getting started, but I want to make sure that y'all are on board with me for a waste of set. What's, uh, what's part time? 20 hours a week? 20, less than 25 mm -hmm. hours a week? Yeah. That'll we, pretty much fill her schedule up. Yeah, no, that's what I mean, I'm going We ought to be able to pay almost all of her salary. Well, that's what I was hoping for. And I told him, I said, she's also a canine officer in control, too. I said, no, can't, can't pay your whole salary. Just while she's in the school. Doing there. Doing there. Yeah. Now I'm thinking, okay, she's called out uh, to search a vehicle and we found <coughs> the drugs. Just getting them off the street, preventing somebody else from overdose. Uh, they didn't seem like they thought that that it would go that, that they would approve that. Yeah. Uh, you know, the lady I talked to was uh, like Diane Charlotte Chavez. But I'm not sure her first name, but anyway, I talked to her at the length on Friday. I've been trying to talk to her for two, two and a half weeks. We kept messing each other. So uh, that's another reason why we really wasn't ready to present Julie to present it to. Yeah, so if, what, if, if we decide as, as a court to divvy up this money four different ways, okay, does, do we give Scott the, the, the authority to spend at his discretion and come back on him? Because if not, then we're, the, the court just okay in another bill for him every time he needs to do something. You know, if we're going to give him the money, give him the authority to use it without coming back and saying, I need this much money from the general fund. Well, I, I, I agree with this. Right. Right. Bills, though, so he's going to yeah. still come here anyway. Yeah, because I'm fee pooling, I mean, you're actually going to steal anyhow. But I think, you know, I think the, the purpose of him being here, he just wants to make sure we're on board with it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I won't speak myself, but I'm on board with it, so I mean, I guess we we'll and, 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 some more. And going along with Will, and I'm kind of thinking the same way, I mean, we could tonight vote up to an amount. I mean, we have, we've only spent $10,000 out of 100, How much is it? 8, 100, 100, 183, 183. Anyhow, well, let me back up. We put 50 in a CD. That's right. We do have 50 in a CD, but we got the balance still. But we, and, and that CD is just a six months. CD. Right, and that, I want y'all to know I'm not even going to attempt to start this program in this school year. There's just not enough time. Uh, we're going to yeah, develop it. They have it ready when school starts so next year with the school board yeah. approval to launch it then. Uh, of course, Julie, we were taking canine Spencer in with her. Uh, that dog, for better or worse, Everybody people love dog. that dog and kids love that dog and you get their attention. 
a whole lot of keeping kids out of away from drugs I think is having that law enforcement officer well, connection so with the kids. I think just I think we're pretty good up to ten thousand dollars right now. Yeah, I was thinking a little more. I'm fine with well, a little more. I'm on the fence. I'd rather hear what Julie comes back with the, at the next meeting, hopefully, and then we can have a better idea about what figure we want yeah. to put forth. Well, okay. or, or possibly by that point, they can have a figure to give Yeah, them. we, we yeah. haven't even well, asked. I haven't been to the school board yet. Yeah. Can I get that done? And then uh, we get, we all I've got to find out how much the materials cost for right. however many fifth graders we have. Yeah, I'm hoping Julie maybe has had well, I would say you have our support and continue on. And that's all yeah. everyone else agrees. Okay, thank and you. Another thing to consider, too, um, that we didn't really have a chance to fit it anywhere, but there is another round of settlements for mm -hmm. opioids. Absolutely. And uh, by the numbers they projected this year, we'll get another 105000 and then that'll be split up. The balance will be split up running through the year 2038. Yeah. Uh, so we've got another 300 plus thousand. Uh, 362000 or something. Of course, it's over the course. Oh, Another 15 years. I think if you get the program started, it needs to continue every year. And then there is a state pool of money. See, they kept a pool of it. And I'm sure they got big hands trying to well, get I'm in. Sure they did. But, uh, you know, we, we possibly could have a chance at, at getting some of that also. You know, if we had a, you know, just, some programs. To piggyback right on what Will said, if it does come up, my stance would be on it that instead of going down, Let's go up to where yeah, I, I, kids I, I, get older and they schools. get into that peer pressure thing. And that's Correct. why they still need to have somebody in there. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking sixth graders and seventh graders. Yeah. I think sixth or eighth grade is the best yeah, target for sales. Yeah. Well, their program was developed to start with fifth grade. So that's why I want to start with. And Julie's got, I mean, right there, she right. has all the training, but she got to go back and get recertified as brought up to speed. Uh, she'll go down to the KSP island down there, Dale Hollow, for that. Uh, so that's also can you send part me with of this. Huh? Can you send me with her? Sure. On Dale Hollow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there'll be a charge for that, of course, but that's also something that I hope to use this money for is her, her training. And she probably has to do so many hours in service every year with it, too. But I have everything itemized out. Uh, what we think it cost, you know, estimates is what we think yeah. it cost. And uh, then, you know, between what Julie's canine duties and patrol duties are, then I want to be able to buy next school year her other hours be dedicated to uh, the DARE program. Uh, we also want to put the DARE down the side of the canine vehicle, you know, to promote it. So you eventually want her to work full time? Yes, yeah, back to full time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, we good? Yeah. Okay. I uh, want to let you know, uh, I talked to Scott about this. Uh, a lot of our tasers just are obsolete the road. Uh, I got four of them that won't do anything. But William McKinney actually found a place that we could still buy parts for our old ones. So what we're done with our old ones, the ones that still work, we put new batteries in them, new uh, cartridges in them and stuff and the C, uh, CSOs, Core Security, and they are using those this time. But I also bought eight brand new X2s, uh, and we paid for that out of drug seizure money, and it was somewhere in the area of $10,000 for those. Uh, we haven't issued them yet because they sent us the wrong posters, and we ordered them for the same time. So we're waiting on the holsters to come in to fix, fix them before we issue them. Uh, that's uh, when we're going to transition the uh, pepper ball guns uh, to be kept in the truck and used for situations that, that they work for. It's, it's just not as usable as a taser is. You know. So, uh, like I said, there's $10,000 of drug seizure money that I spent there. Uh, the AEDs, I bought two AEDs to go in the sheriff's office. One of them will be put in the prisoner uh, holding area. Uh, if you let a prisoner die and you ain't got an AED, it's going to be bad on us. So I put one, I'm going to have, we just got them in today. I'm going to have one mounted in the prisoner holding area, other one will be mounted in the office area to where, uh, you know, somebody collapses in, the, in our lobby, it's easy to access to it, or one of our people, uh, probably Daryl, because he's getting kind of old, 
but you know we'll take it. <laughs> like, we'll be able, and now it'll be me. But anyway, uh, we'll have that AED accessible for that too. Uh, we're going to. Uh, Sharon called me today. I signed the check before I left for her to pay for them, and then uh, she called and said the guy wanted to uh, uh, resurface. And I said, well, I'm the only one even working today, so uh, I think Chris Lynch is going to research every one of our deputies and our office staff to use the AED. It doesn't take 15, 20 minutes to do it. But, uh, you know, so we'll have that up to speed, too. So there's $2,800 that I've spent out of the other season. And I want y'all to know that uh, eventually I'm going to bring y'all everything I've spent from drug seizure money since I started. Uh, just so y'all know. Uh, I said, I ain't got no, nothing to hide. I want you to know what I'm doing behind the scenes <coughs> to save this court money. And, uh, you know, uh, why should the taxpayer pay for all this stuff? They want to peddle drugs in their counties and they can pay part of the bill. Uh, tax collection. Hold on here. We signed for $16,550,058.75. That was 9,636 bills we signed for. More or less took responsibility to collect. We collected 99% of that. Per KRS, in the morning, we will be turning uh, unpaid tax bills over to the, to the clerk. We'll be turning over 100,178.94. That sounds like a lot of money, but when you talk about 16 million, it's not that big, you know, but we could definitely use that, and we're not going to get it all back, but we're turning over 147 tax bills is what we'll be turning over. The day it closed was the last time they could pay at the sheriff's office. Now they can still go to the clerk and pay, and then eventually they'll go to uh, sale and court and stand. Any questions there? Uh, let's see where I'm at here. Let's talk about uh, court security. Uh, the circuit court clerk has brought the issue to me. Uh, we had we were supposed to meet today, and then she had a chance. So I was going to meet Thursday. The circuit courtroom in the top of the old courthouse. There's five ways to get in the courthouse. I don't want to limit anybody's access to Lynn's office, but right now, during the circuit court days, they can go up the back steps or they can go up the elevator. And the shooting in Louisville kind of kicked the circuit court clerk in bringing up this issue, which you know that's how we all do means our fair action. But if someone come up that elevator and had a gun, all they got to do is step out and shoot one guy at the Megatron, and they're at the gate. They're at the circuit judge right now. I want to talk with ALC and get them to come down here and explore possibilities of on court days. Do the lock stairway. Everybody has to use the elevator. But if we do that, we still got to have two more Megatron. Well, we got to have one more than the one that's upstairs. Any of these new courthouses have been built all the way around us. You don't even get in the courthouse to anything until you go your scan. This courthouse was built years and years ago before we had shootings, mass shootings and stuff. So it's not an ideal situation, but it's what we've got. But I've got to look at it, and Becky Robinson's got to look at it, how best can we protect our judge, our clerks, the people in the courtroom, and our court security people. So. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll come back with what we come up with. <coughs> it's really a AOC's baby to do, yeah. but if we don't push the button, they're not going to come down here and do nothing with it. So I, I want y'all backing if, you know, maybe you may have to call them up and say, hey, come on, the sheriff needs this. Because it's just about safety, it's all it's about. Y'all, hold on. Do y'all have any comments to go along with him? Uh, you know, I mean, we, we got a general consent among us that. Uh, that obviously is an issue that we need to address. That's yes. right, good with that. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you know, if, the, if our, they come down here and make the recommendations, then then we can look at, okay. Yeah, and, and they should be the ones to pay for it. But, you know, we'll find out what's going to happen. But, 
Yeah, you know, I mean, you can come to the judge's office get in there. Now, you know, they got to come past you and Rachel and Brittany and Doug. not likely to happen. Well, then, they, Doug's door, they can. they can come through Doug's door. They can come through <coughs> either one of the doors on each side of the courthouse, or they can come in the elevator. Well, they so break, that courthouse... They break in that old door outside. Yeah, that courthouse during court days it's really kind of scary. It's a busy place. Well, you know, you bring 15 and 20 prisoners in here, uh, and maybe Mama wants to really bob out of jail. You know, I mean, you know, we don't know what will happen. Uh, when I when I went to high school, I'm sure Jim too. We had guns in our rear, in our windows, and nobody ever said nothing about it. So it's just a different day and age, and we have to address it. So anyway, I'm going to be working on that. And Scott, whatever, my office and Corey, I'll speak for Corey and Cheryl here, but we're. You know, we'll we'll support whatever we need to do to keep circuit court safe. Yeah, it's not. I'm not saying it's not safe now, well, but it safe, needs a whole lot safest. more safety. Right. Yeah, safety address. Be safest. Be yeah. safest it can be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they can't go up the front steps. You know, in the courthouse. And I was walking across the street the other day on on circuit court day, and a state trooper stopped and said, "How do I get that?" I said, "You have to go to the back of the building and go up the elevator or the steps." So, but if we have, to, I don't know that we have to keep the steps open. Uh, I mean, everybody can ride an elevator, you know, handicapped or whatever. And we have to keep that elevator operating just to stay in compliance. Well, uh, you're probably, you probably, know, I don't think you could block the steps off because yeah. if, I don't know. if electricity went down, your elevator's down. So then we, yeah. 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 Well, well, there's there's a fire steps is mainly for emergency exit, yeah. Yeah. not entrance. And if we could make it before you can go out of them, you can't come up. You know, we, you know we it's just a lot of things we've got to look at to make it better. We could pass a resolution of the court supporting this so you can give it to, you know, ALC and say, you know, okay. this report, you know, is, is on board with this. Okay. Just well, I mean, and then that might be the, the route to take, you know, you know, so when I go to them, I do have a resolution to have y'all spiking and say, hey, come down here, let's look at this, and let's address these problems. Uh, every county that joins us has got the new courthouse. That pisses me off because we need a new courthouse. Uh, I don't dislike our old one. It's historical <coughs> for what it was at the time it was built. But it's time that the ALC stepped forward and does the right thing by Spencer County when they've done it all the way around. Okay. Uh, I have found out, and this, you know, I've been hearing rumors of this. My federal drug seizure funds, I've got $70,000 in it. Uh, when I took over the office and don't hold me the exact number, I think it was $1,500 and change in. The rest of it has been collected during my first four and a half years. We've always had a fund for it. We've never spent a dime of it ever. We've always just used a state for which funds. They're telling me now that I need to turn that money over to the county treasurer and he opens up an account for that money, and then hopefully it will be earmarked for the sheriff's department to spend, but I, I need to come to y'all and say, okay, I'm gonna buy whatever. I'll still have to get y'all's approval before I can spend it. But hopefully we would, uh, I hope none of one, nobody on this court would wanna take it and do something else with it other than what it was seized for, and that's for law enforcement. Yeah, we appreciate the $7,000. Well, you know, I, I didn't really want to give it, but I'll do whatever I got to do, stay out of jail. And, and, and we did get documentation that exactly says that. Yeah. And we even got some clarification on exactly. And I got that from Brittany today. Yeah. And, and I've been hearing rumors of it, but I've never seen it in black and white. Before, right, so right. Well, we got, it in, it we got it in black and white, and it's exactly what you said. The federal part of it needs to come back, and then we can choose to give it to give it back to you for programs, but it has to come back. Right. State well, and I asked Brittany, I said, what have they enacted a new law? And her opinion was, uh, and maybe whoever she talked to, she thought it was a law the federal government done a long time ago, but it had never really been enacted. And now some new little green attorneys come along and goes, hey, this is the way it's supposed to be. Nothing against attorneys. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. 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 Yeah, I, Her words, not mine. <laughs> I, I got it right here, Scott. Here, here's what it says, and this is from a fellow, Jared W. Taylor, the Department of Local Government. 
uh, local government advisor. If the asset forfeiture is derived from federal action, the county must management and approve disbursements. Okay, if the asset forfeiture is a result of state police or other local law enforcement action, the sheriff is responsible for management of the account. So basically, yes, uh, you'll need to give that back. I will. Well, and, and I'm then, not giving it back. I'm going to give it to the person. Well, yeah, but yeah, I'll, yeah. we will. Uh, I'll get with Doug this week, and we'll write a check out of that account, and we'll close that account at the bank, and then that money will be transferred into a new account, y'all. And and I mean, because this court still will have to vote to open a new account, and okay, well, and however y'all got to do it to make it work. The bank will open an account and all that good stuff. So. Okay, if you want to work on that and get. You know, yeah. I, I've been holding money for four years. I can hold it another three well, weeks. I mean, you know, also over. look at it in the budget process. We're going to have to budget that money now because if not, then we will spend it if we don't right. budget it. Right. have to go on <laughs> line item. The so Scott anyway. Capital. What did you say, Will? Will's Capital. Yeah. 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 Scott Capital. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, not this guy. <laughs> this is not I mean, I, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I would support you utilizing it myself. Okay. Just me. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, I'm mean, getting ready to go into another budget year. Uh, I don't have really any extra vehicles. I do have a vehicle that in the last term, I agreed for the jailer. He gets to use it, and I get to use it. Now, we've got a new jailer, and that's, it says uh, prison transport on it. If I needed to, a deputy could drive it while a vehicle was down, you know. Because then it takes the vehicle away from being transported. Uh, the transport van, of course, is also the sheriff's and the neighbors. And then I got an unmarked uh, explorer uh, that could be utilized, but I like marked vehicles when we're actually patrolling. Uh, but that vehicle, most time, we use it if somebody's going to pick up something or something. The main thing we use it for is uh, our evidence technician to take stuff to KSP lab. And she goes up our, basically every week. And uh, she is a former police officer. She doesn't want to be re-sworn in. And you know how it is when you're sitting on the side of the road and a marked vehicle flies by? Well, they didn't even care about it. You know, an unmarked vehicle, she can go on and take care of business. And she's not sworn. So it just fits that Spencer County Sheriff on it. We drive by people. You know, they're going to think, well, what? So why didn't they stop and help us? So this way, that vehicle is unmarked. Of course, she can go on and take care of business. Go straight to KSP lab, drop it off, and get back. If, if you're going to get Ben's force, get get many options. Uh, okay, well, what I was going to say, I really used two vehicles that's coming up here, new ones, and then uh, I think, uh, probably my truck would be replaced. Maybe not. I, I really got to look at all the mileages, but really I want to buy Ford F 150s if possible. Uh, I'm just partial to Ford. I think we need to support our Ford workers. And that's what I'd like to buy. And if not two pickup trucks, I'd like to have at least one pickup truck because I just think there's a lot of times we've got to haul stuff, pull stuff, whatever. I like to keep at least one good pickup truck, maybe two, but if we can't do two pickups, do one pickup and one Ford Explorer. I like the Ford Explorer for great for us. Uh, they're not as good as the old Crown Vic as far as actually having room in them, but they're the uh, kind of to go police vehicle today. Uh, we've got since I've hired the very boy, he has got a vehicle, and uh, Tommy uh, Mahiki, he's going to start the academy in July, and he's going to have a vehicle driving back and forth. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. I don't really have uh, extra vehicles sitting around. And, and I'm not saying I need to, but you still need a vehicle or two because when you're running that many vehicles, Something's always broke, something's got to be fixed or something. Anyway. You're going to put that in your budget proposal, right? Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to kind of prepare you all for, you know, and, uh, and I will get prices on the, the F-150, I'll get them on the stores, and if y'all want me to, I'll get them on the Chevy's, Dodges, whatever. Uh, I just prefer my personal self is forward, uh, what I like in my personal vehicle, and, uh, and I think it held up well. And we're supporting our board workmanship. Any more questions? Any comments? Any concerns? Yes. 
it's like 43 cents a mile, so much for your deputy and so forth. You know, of course on circuit court days, I know there was last month or this month, there was one time we made two trips with the van, picking up two loads. And then we had to make two more back to get them all back, you know. Your, your monthly finance reports will show you what the jailer made, what the deputies got paid for the month, uh, what we paid in housing, medical bills, whatever. Now we'll be broke down into the other. And I mean, this is right here. Uh, I've got all three of the jail bills here. I don't know exactly why, but the jail bills from well, in January it was thirty-eight thousand. It's down to thirty-three thousand. I know some of that is because our circuit judge is giving some of them time, and once she gives them time, I might certainly go off of the county's bill and onto the state's bill. So, and she's been pretty consistent with that. You know, the ones she hasn't given time, they're probably back get time, but never you know. Uh, of course, you had almost you know almost a fourth more total in January than you did total in March. Mm -hmm. You know, 102 to 123. Yeah. So. But it's always north of 30,000. Yeah. You pay Shelbyville jail. It's not cheap to house prisoners, but it's cheaper than building our own jail. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Way cheaper. Yeah. You know, because if you built a jail, you're looking you have to build it what state specs said you had to build it for. You're probably looking 12, 15 million to build it. We're not looking. No. no. Also, we, don't, we can't afford it. I also yeah. didn't the legislature adopt a moratorium on construction of new jails? Or which I, may have, I may have misheard from Representative. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, think we want to even list. think about yeah. it. Yeah. So, uh, no, I not, mean, we're not thinking about the <laughs> conversation. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. Next. Uh, on the deputy jailers, 15 years ago, when I was transporting prisoners, I was making $40 a run. That's what they're making today. Scott kind of put me in a bind. He moved the court security and stuff that was doing transports up to 60. Mine was still 40. I'd like to raise mine up to 60 to where it's more fair. And you think, well, that's a whole lot of money just to take somebody to jail. But the thing you got to look at is, number one, that guy, well, just like from midnight on till 6 in the morning, if that guy's on, he gets called out, he goes. It don't matter if it's snowing or what. If he's on from 6 o'clock this afternoon to 6 in the morning, his wife wants to go out to eat, we can't do that because I'm on call. There's a lot of errors in there that you don't know when you're going to get called out. So when you look at that $60, not only is it takes most time, about the best you're going to do is two, two errors for a, a round trip. Most time it's more like three or, or better to just haul somebody to jail. And uh, as I said, 15 years ago I was making four, and I'd like for y'all to... And y'all don't do any kind of on call <laughs> Anything? No. That's what this is. I know, but I'm just saying if they make no runs, they make no money. They make no money. Right. You know, like, you know, it's a lot of times you're going to call it. Daryl has been hauling the world himself. Yeah. On a, uh, he, that's, he just gets his, I mean, he gets his salary being jailer. He doesn't right. get a. The way I look at it, uh, when I haul somebody, I need to save the county $40 or $60. You know. Well, what we'll would just let you make them all? Well, that would be nice, but I, I can't do it all. <laughs> and that would and that would suit Scott, his brother. <laughs> yes. I'll make a motion that we increase it from forty dollars to sixty dollars a run. I'll second. All right, we have a motion by Zach, seconded by Jim, to raise it from forty to sixty dollars a run. Uh, you was uh, asking about retroacting it back to April first. That's fine with me. All right. Any discussion? So it's going to start immediately, or? It looks like we're going to buy it. April 1st. Can we just make a motion to start that now? Yeah. 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 Y
Well, part of the reason why I was asking, we have payroll this week, and I just want to make yeah. sure on the runs he had this week. I say start April 17th, exactly like that. Yep. And then people who get paid this day. week, they'll get the $60 to run. I mean, if he's starting tonight, you good with that there? Better than nothing. You good with that, Zach, with him? <laughs> so, I don't yeah. know. So, uh, uh, Madam Clark, we'll just uh, strike you out. April first, and just say uh, tonight, today, starting today. All right. Any discussion? Well, I'm just going to simply argue that this is the sheriff's job for KRS, not the jailer's job. So, what's the sheriff's job? Transport prisoners. Falls under him. In the county with no jail. So, all right. Any other discussions? <coughs> Uh, we'll go ahead and vote. Uh, Madam Clerk, <coughs> you would call the roll, please. Sorry, Travis. Yes. No, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, Jim. Sorry, Patrick. Yes. Sorry, Scott. I thought you said the judge, too. Yes. Ferris, uh, Squire Ferris. Yes. Squire Eldridge. Yes. Squire uh, Judge Travis. Yes. Yeah, we've run long. Not, not as long, but... Oh, my birthday, like all, right. Motion all right, motion carries. Thank you, thank you, Darren. Thank you all. Uh, now we have the vote for the invoices, but I gotta add that that Elk Creek Animal Shelter, that uh, my animal shelter, Elk Creek Animal Hospital. That, uh, and we are getting them where it's more regular and easy. Brittany work. I know a half a day coming up with that that figure. But anyway, we'll add that $8,099.28 to the invoices, bills, and transfers. So, I think you can tell them if we're not billed in 30 days, we're going to pay them. So, this is from December 5th of 2022. To, to, to the day, right? Yeah. Well, and there was a, I mean, there was even a, a balance then, but I don't think we owe it. I mean, doesn't the DLG say it's a no-no to be us having invoices outstanding the past 30 days? I think there's a rule against It's that. not an invoice. They didn't send us one. Well, there, there you go. Yeah, right here says so invoice. That's why an invoice comes in only when we stamp when it comes in. Yeah. Right. But they can't be billing us from the but fifth. This is this, this, but this, this is better. There. I wouldn't have they billed this us. This isn't ours, right? This is what they sent us. Correct. What's that? This is what they just sent us. All right. Well, this, this is this is this, this isn't what Doug got made in his office. This is what they use. That's what they sent us. That's what they sent us. And well, and I mean, it was about a month ago. Brittany was trying to figure this out, and when she called out, she called out. She figured, she figured. She come up with, with what it was. Uh, and she's trying to make it make sense. She she was satisfied that it made sense. But anyway, it don't this, make any sense to me. This is what we Why don't we just you uh, all please require them to uh, do it on a monthly basis? Yes, yes, yeah, we agree. And we're going to be paying stuff. Uh, no, we're not double paying for nothing. But going forward, I think they're supposed to be billing on every dollar when they do it, send them the invoice and bill in. And I know that have a PO number attached to the dog. Or however you and, do that. and let, let me tell you guys, uh, it's a nightmare. keep keeping the up, looks with, like a nightmare. up with animals like this. You know, I saw that and I thought there ain't no way in the world we owe that to it. that thing. Well, my thing but, is, is we start out at all right. So we're at three seventeen. We're saying we we owe eight thousand ninety nine dollars, and then on. Um, up here, two, three. If this is all an outstanding balance, we were at eleven thousand the first of February, and we made any payments. Are you allowed to get yeah, there? Yeah, we have. Okay, okay. What's uh, and part of the confusion? If you look halfway down, look at that one eighteen and twenty three. Like they have special pricing on some stuff. See that thirty percent? Yeah, yeah. And. I don't remember what she told me, but and then look halfway down at 130. There's a 30% discount. Yeah. And anyway, it was just confusing as all get out. But going forward, will it make more sense or better? So 
That's all I can There you go. All right. What's this payment check number? And is this payment fair and credit practice EC? Payment cash practice. We don't pay cash. I think you get a discount. So they may have just listed it that way. Uh, anyway, it's confusing. It is confusing. <laughs> but I, I want to promise you, come in and uh, Brittany will do her best to explain to you. Way better than I can try to. It's not. Your Brittany shouldn't have to. No. That's, that's totally, you're totally accurate. And we have paid some bills to them, and then we've also had the spay and neuter grant that was done, which I think we sent more than what the grant was for, but still, I mean, it, you know, if they could have any dogs and all come in when the spay and neuter program was done, and they did the work, we still had to pay for it. So, I guess it's been seven bills and there were $13 since July on animal medical. Well, every animal that comes in has to have certain tests. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a lot of expense. <coughs> I make a motion that we, I guess we're going to pay all the bills. Yeah. Yeah. Pay all the bills and make all the transfers. Including this one. Including the bed bill. All right. I have a motion by Zach. Is there a second? My second. Seconded by Wheel to pay the invoices, bills, and transfers, including the bill for Elk Creek Animal Hospital. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I got a question. Yes. On page 125 of the invoices, we've got Harp Enterprises. Uh, that's our voting machine. So, partial billing for May's primary. Are we paying that in advance? The four thousand dollars. That's machine setting. When is that? Is when is that done? It's already been done. It's already been done. Okay. Gotcha. I had one more. Well, I think it was just a comment I was going to make about the road department. You know, we, we put $100,000 in for gravel. Yes. Uh, I think at this point in the fiscal year, uh, I believe we had a whole lot less than that in gravel budgeted for the road department and we haven't used half of what was budgeted much less than a hundred thousand so the road department evidently is not putting the gravel down the roads for their they're not showing it they've been busy cleaning up limbs uh, for the last couple of months and i instruct todd every week where's my hundred ton go every week and what sometimes you twice get? a week uh he'll tell where he's put some and and i'm after him now i i have i was after him that i wanted every row mold before memorial day memorial day is in the spring right mm -hmm. end of may end of all right i want every road mold at least one pass but he's going to finish that thursday of course i bumped that up now a lot of roads is not ready to mold but with that, mold with that mower he's able to mow up in tree limbs that we don't have to pick up so that's why he went ahead and saw that that was a benefit. Figure out the lower again, <laughs> more of them. <laughs> Maybe. But anyway, I know he, he comes down on my old road and they, they mow the limbs and he's got a box blade and they'll put some of them out of the way and then mow some of them. And they didn't have to pick up any of them. Much, they don't think. Well, we don't like you as much. He's getting there. All right, all right, y'all hang, hang on. Just, I got one more thing. Yep. Uh, I sent you guys. You should have got an email. Oh, you probably didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got a vote on the bills and invoices. Yeah. We had a motion by Zach. Second by you, wasn't it? Second by Wheel. 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 Information. Uh, what this is, you, you may not have got it. Did you get the info email? I'll let you look at mine. When we were discussing about uh, uh, doing the QR codes on everyone's vehicles, and then we talked about getting a, a tracker, uh, Brittany and I was on a Zoom meeting with uh, AT&T, 
at and offers a service. And they have uh, dash cameras, uh, they have tracking devices, and it's relative, relatively affordable to get. And I just, I suggested to the, the lady on the Zoom call who's gonna get us a price together. And I, it may be in that documentation, I'm not sure. So of, of what possibly a five dash cams would cost that we could put in what I had in mind was a, the carton heads and then start with the tracking devices on other vehicles and uh, I wanted to, to give that information out because we had discussed when you all charged us with looking into options and the AT&T option <coughs> uh, there was another option but it, I, it was a good bit more money and I didn't get it till later so I didn't include it but I wanted to present that tonight just for uh, for discussion purposes. I didn't get a copy of it. My email's been announced. Yeah, it ain't in the, it's, it's not in that microwave. Your packet either. I didn't see the email. Yeah, all in. All right. Well, they come late because they're coming from you. They come from Brittany. They came from Brittany. Yeah. yeah. Was, it, was it to each one of us? No, it was in a group message. Oh, here's a group message. It was probably well, sometime before lunch when she sent it. Could have been after lunch. I don't think any of them got it. No. I got it. Uh, oh, yeah, I just got one. If so, the grand total would be a recurring cost. I don't know if it's month or it did it break it down. But it's like four hundred, four hundred five, eight five. I think it's about a month. Or yes. Yeah. What do you get? They're, they're not terribly expensive. Yeah. What do you get for that? GPS tracking dash cams. Um, like right. the whole thing. Yeah, pretty much the whole weight. Is that like for everybody, or is that for like your first time? That's what? for like uh, I think it's part of the heads. The vehicles are part of the heads. Is no, right? it's it's for about 20, 11 to twenty five units. Depending on it's on. it's about to, just for a, tr a tracking device. I'm going by memory. It was about half what the dash cam thing cost. Now they had an example of a dash cam. It was going across, and you're familiar with law enforcement. It's going across the hood of the car, and then there was one on the guy driving. So when this guy driving was on his cell phone, there he is looking at his cell phone when he's driving. We're seeing it. So this thing with your department parks? I'll, I'm just, we, you guys charged my What I'm thinking with this is to get info. It's tracking device and control the vehicle, so we are going to put, be putting it on um, vehicles. We'll be putting it on our county owned assets. So you can't, I don't think you can do it on law enforcement. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not proposing that we would even consider it. Because for EMS, he's tracking his own stuff, and I think for law enforcement, for the confidential reasons, you don't know, can't do that. So well, even for medical stuff, there'd be confidential. Yeah, so we can't do it. So it'd be like road department parks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or Randy, road department parks. Recycling. Yeah, yeah recycling. But, but, you know, I, I just want to put it out that you know, we researched that you can get a device, and this tracking device, basically what it does is it's in real time. You can, you can look on a video and you can see this vehicle going down the highway. You know how fast it's going. You know where it stops. You can check a box, and if it takes a curve fast, it warns you. And if it goes over 10 miles, or you know, speed, it'll warn you. That kind of thing. But I mean, there, that's what's out there. And I think that was like 20 some bucks a vehicle, and then the dash cams was about double. It was like we need to put one of those on every uh, road department vehicle, period. And I mean, Rollers, that's good yeah. enough. That's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. They've been working on it. That way we can help. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it is how I see it is we, we need to sell it to our employees as it's an asset. Not a liability. What is the tracker? What are we, we're tracking. We got, we got, I don't know, we got somewhere around four million, five million, and just in those two or three departments, and it's vehicles and equipment. We don't know where it's at. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, it's, it's I mean, what was it? Back in January, it was the back was sitting down on call structure, and we had no, nobody knew where it was at. I mean, it's the way you're talking about wanting to run an audit on stuff, and this is the way to audit that. It's the way for us to pick up our cell phone or pull up the computer and say, well, this is what we have, this is where it's at. 
Well, you know, also a female is a big It's a way to grow some tractors. We'll know exactly where to go get it. You know, right. So that's it's a way to track what, where, what jobs are getting done, where they're working, what materials are being there, what track truck hires, equipment hires. Um, it's just an all around safety issue. We have somebody going out here and something happens, they get hurt, we can't get them off. Because how many places we got in our county on county roads that don't have service? And they get down one of the little holes and they this thing get service. So this will work? Yeah, so you know how long they keep records of everything there? Or they they keep they told us they keep it for an amount of time. But then, if you needed to retrieve it after a certain time, they have an avenue that you can retrieve it. Okay, and an additional cost? Don't think so. Because yeah. it would be a it looks know, like a of sort in terms of you know, right. becoming a record liability. It would be like the body cam. Correct. Right. So, so it, it, is, it is going to have additional cost, and but I would like us to, I, I would, you got to do what you want. We're, we're six of us sitting here, but. You know, I, I would like us to, I wanted to bring it up so we can have a discussion, so we can get some feedback from our employees. Uh, when we rolled out the QR code, it was tough in a few places, but they got over it. Well, this is going to be even tougher than that. Right. <coughs> it's going to be tough. I don't care how you sell it. They ain't going to like it. I went through this amount of watching yeah. it. You can sell it. I don't care how you sell it. They ain't going to like it. So anyway, uh, you know. The, the, sell it, so there it is. The, the court is seated oh, and, and we are it. we are open for business and action. Yeah. So well, I mean if y'all want to see if y'all want to put a motion in place, we can put a motion to go on and but if it sound like is it, I guess it's like a year contract or something like that? Uh, uh it's it, it's, it's your gar really you're, you're guaranteed uh I think it was three years, but I think you could quit. Well Brittany County for 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 guaranteed for the price. For three years. But for three years, but then I don't think it was a fee if you quit. Well, why don't because we already have AT and T cert. Uh, we're in the AT and T loop with our phones and stuff, so that's why we well, actually we got a little more information. Well, why don't you? I was just like, why don't you and Brittany work with Zach for the equipment committee? Let's figure out exactly how many units that we need. What right. we want to do, I'll and bring, then we'll bring more info back and have a proposal at the next meeting, and we'll go from there, and hopefully we can vote something. in. Y'all good with that? Yep. Okay. Your general consent. General consent. All right, we're good with that. This is tough for yes. adjourn. We won't make a motion to open a federal drug seizure account. I mean, we yeah. have something in the minutes or whatever because the bank will require. I'll be up that way. Yeah. We got to do it anyway. I'll I'll make that motion, Doug, that we open a federal drug seizure account uh, at the People's Bank. To, that way it'll handle the funds that Scott will turn back I'll to second us. that. All right, have a motion by myself, second by Jim, to open this account. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. And I'll try to get with Scott on that too to see. I don't know if that money can draw interest or if it can or anything else. And I just now thought of something else we didn't have under the committees. All right. The insurance committee. We we're going to bring that up tonight on um, the health insurance. Okay, I'll, I'll yes, yeah, I'll I'll bring it up real quick. I'll bring it up real quick. We met uh, the other day, Dan and I. Uh, Lynn was in on on it, and uh, Todd, Julie, Chris, myself, Doug. and then Daryl's on the committee. But I think he was busy that day. So, but anyway, what what I, what I was trying to do is, is get a figure together for budgetary numbers, and I want to try to include four and a half percent additional. That way, all our employees will be up to the six and a half percent because we give them two right out of the gate, and then to try to find four and a half percent equitably that'll benefit the most, the best. And Chris Lemp said this is going to be a hard task, and I said I know it is, but we got to try come up with something equitable to all. So we came up with a combination of, uh, currently we pay 700 on folks insurance. Raise that to, this is proposed, we're, we're going to bring this, to, I'm going to have this in my budget. For I'll, just, I'll just put it that way. I'll, I'll have these numbers in my budget. All the way across the board. Yeah, 800 bucks. Whatever plan you take, we'll pay an additional 100. Also, the FEDCO card, Right now, it's only for uh, full-time employees that qualify. Uh, 
the guy with Scott Brown with the insurance company that we use says that we can get a FEPCO card for everyone that's full time, not just ones that qualify. And then we discussed, we agreed to take it up two hundred more dollars. So from a thousand, it would be to twelve hundred. All right. Then make it up, make up the four and a half percent, whatever's left out of salaries. And that's what I'm planning to put in my budget, something that has that. So it'll be basically everyone come July 1 will be able to see a, a six of them. Well, they'll have 2% when we hired them on first day in office, guys, which is, I think, a great gesture to tell our employees that we appreciate it. And then to match the consumer price index, try to get that extra four and a half. And I'm planning to have that in my budget. So you're going to split offset some of that with... I want to figure out, figure out the best way to be most equitable for well, the sooner we all. approve this, if we go to the 800 and increasing the FEBCO card and those type of things and keeping like the plans we had, the sooner they can set up dates for open enrollment for the next fiscal year. Now, we did also, <coughs> we did look at the state health insurance pool if we make a switch over to that. We kind of made the decision within the group that if we wanted to switch to that, we're going to have to wait till the end of the fiscal uh, calendar year because everybody's deductible right now. If we switch to the state pool, you go back to zero on your deductible. So if we want to look at that, the committee needs to look at it around October when the new plans come out to the state pool. And then let's say, and then if we decide to do that, we could both get out of what we're in and go to the state. Well, I think we should look at something because I think bring the basics. And, but but anyway, that's uh, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, but that we're going to start working on budget this week because we'll have a budget to present in May. May first, the first meeting in May. We'll have a budget ready, and uh, that'll be a five hour meeting. Nah. We got to, uh, y'all like it. Yeah, anyway, but, uh, we'll, we'll get it. We'll, we'll get it because uh, we got to get it sent up to Frankfurt. So it has to be there when? June 1st. June it has to be to them by May 1st. It has to be to Frankfurt by June 1st. Yeah, us by May 1st, them by June 1st. And then, of course, it's your budget. So yeah, we vote on it. Then because and then all over on it, the first reading. And then second reading, before you do second reading, GLG has to approve it. And it comes back here and then it has to be approved before the end of June. There's not, you said they don't do that first. Because we, we went through that a while back, thinking we were going to be sure of that. <laughs> so anyway, so we got a lot of work to do ahead of us. So we need to put on the next time's agenda then to bring back whether to approve doing the health insurance thing to let Scott Brown and them know work on getting ready for open enrollment since we didn't really have it on the agenda tonight i don't care i just wanted to keep everybody so they know what we met i, I think it will uh, i mean we'll, we'll put the budget numbers in and pr present that and then that'll be a green light well because all, all we're changing is basically with the insurance is adding 100 bucks yeah, adding a hundred bucks there and then the twelve hundred on the fifth two twelve hundred well, on the fifth. Adding two hundred more. So well, I mean we gotta also on the next meeting we have to have a, that census committee seated and appointed for this reinforcement of the precincts. Yeah, can you bring that to me? Yeah. Line that up and then we'll have it ready. So anything else that brand new that I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. All right. Uh, communications from citizens. Yes. Hi, my name is uh, Donnie Perry. Um, and Mr. Alvarez, is this your birthday today? It is, yes, sir. I won't keep you long. Happy birthday. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, time. Absolutely. Well, I just wanted to say to you all, thank you so much for all that you do for this community. And I want to let you know God is saying to you that he sees your hard work that you're doing in helping this community, and he's going to bless you for it. And so w would you mind if I just pray over you real quick? Please do. Well, Father, I just thank you so much for your love that you have poured out to us, Lord, with your son, Jesus Christ.
Lord, I just thank you as you just bless these people here in this room, Lord God. I pray that you just give them divine ideas, Lord, and wisdom. I thank you so much for prospering them, Lord God. Let everything they put their hand to prosper, Lord, for your glory. And Lord, I ask that you just show up in these meetings, Lord. I ask that you just tackle every single problem with the perfect wisdom and decisions, Lord God. And I just thank you for anointing their minds and visiting them in their dreams, Lord God, and giving them these ideas and, and ways that, that will prosper this community. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Thank Have a good you. night. Thank, Thank you. you. And for yeah. that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. By Zach. Second. Second. By Will. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. That's coming. That's coming. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, you're <laughs> 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 <laughs>